You never know. All right, you never know. All right, listen, we back in. All right, let's get it going. I appreciate y'all's patience with the audio delay, the echo. Um, tonight is going to be fun, man. I'm really excited about this conversation tonight. And I, I want to tell y'all kind of how it came to be, right? So uh, Thabit sent me a message the other day, was talking about some things that he was looking at, some things he was reflecting on in his business. And he was asking me like, hey, man, like, have you ever been at a point where you've made all this money, right? Like you've made a bunch of money and then you mess it up, right? Like you get a bunch of money in your hand, finally. And what I mean by finally is I think we grind so hard in this business for what we're trying to do. Anything that you're trying to do, whatever type of business, entrepreneurship, job, career, whatever. Like, think about this, right? Like, this is crazy when you think about it. Put in perspective. So starting at five years old, we start going to school. Like, they literally send us to school nonstop. But they, we go to school starting at five until we're 18 years old. Now, some of us go to college and continue our education but think about the type of work that you put in from an educational perspective just to hopefully get a good job, a decent job, a job that pays you a decent wage. And so what tends to happen is I think so, so many times, right, we focus so much energy effort on getting there that we end up not knowing what to do once we're actually there. And so I know John, I know Thabit, they're both students of mine. I've known them for quite some time now. And they're having a, a ton of great success. But sometimes success can come fast. It can come early. And you got to know what to do when it hits. So you guys know who I am. I'm Chris Jefferson. All right, I represent the U. All right, shout out to all the Charge Up fam in the building or who sees this video. Let me get Thabit. Let me get John in the room. And let's start this conversation. Man. Thabit, John, what's good? What's good? What's up, fam? What's up, fam? What's up, coach? Chilling, man. Chilling. So listen, I appreciate y'all's patience. All right. On the uh, on the audio. All right. Uh, we've got it all figured out. It's good to have you guys in the building. Um, you know, I'm glad that it's me having this conversation with both of you guys uh, and we'll get into it in a minute. But for right this second, I want to start with Thabit. Who are you? Quick backstory. Why are you even doing wholesaling? Like, break it down for us, man. For sure, for sure, man. Um, so yeah, Thabit Hitchpath, Thabit Speaks, father, husband, real estate investor, uh, you know, proud you member since Black Friday, one of the original Black Friday babies <laughs> of you fam. Uh six six figure business earner. I think that's what we're talking about tonight. Um, so yeah, that's who I am. No doubt, man. Thank you for being here, Thabit. Uh John. Uh, same to you, man. Who are you? Quick backstory, and uh, let's get into it, man. John Washington, the band design bully, Richmond, VA native. Been wholesaling, got in the business about 2008, 2009, somewhere around there, and then officially since 2010. But uh, yeah, man, just been grinding it out over the years. Full-time real estate investor since 2019. Dope, man. So one of the things I want to talk about first, right, is like we talk about the grind part of this whole thing, like what it takes to even really get to the spot eventually. Um, for both of you guys, I think many people don't know, even maybe people who are students or follow you guys both on social media. Um, talk a little bit about, I guess, like the journey of this, right? Like when did you guys actually start hearing about real estate wholesaling? When did you guys actually end up even doing you know, first deal or even start to get to a point where you're doing consistent deals. What was that process even like for you guys? So I think a lot of us have this mindset that, you know, we see an ad on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. We see a, a Facebook group that says you can do this or you can do that in wholesaling. And a lot of people, I think, think that it's an overnight thing. It's something that you can just start and all of a sudden you're making 10, 15, 20, $100,000. Um, John, if you don't mind starting, man, kind of talk about that a little bit, bro. All right, I started off. Well, I initially heard about wholesaling in 2007. Um, started off basically 2008. Uh, the long way back then, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. As, it wasn't as techy, so to speak. So we're sending out postcards. We're doing, you know, uh, banded signs and basically marketing styles that you probably don't see anymore too much. But uh, just just grinding. It took me about 
from 2000. I, I basically got in in the first market crash. So I got in 2008. I was out 2007, 2008, was out 2009. Was determined that I was gonna make this work. So I jumped. Hold right on, John, 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 John. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I want to make sure people are catching what you're saying right now. All right. You're saying you got in when? In <laughs> in the in the great with the great recession. Uh, All right, just to be just to be crash. clear. All right, just to be really clear, yeah. right? So we're, we're in a recession now. All right. But yeah. the last recession. So yeah. so you know, a long time ago. All right, over 10 years ago, that's when you first found right. out about wholesaling, got right. into the business. So, so when did you start realizing that wholesaling was working for you and you were actually starting to do deals consistently, bro? So I was I was like a deal at a time type dude. I think my did my first deal, I think the end of 2012. So I was like a deal in a year, maybe two deals a year. Kind of strangling along all the way up until 2019. Um, right. And so we see that a lot, early. right? Go ahead, John. Go. Yeah. So yeah, so then early early 2019, I did like a big deal. So I kind of just jumped, just jumped all in at that point, just full time. No doubt, no doubt. So David, what about you, man? Like, when did you first hear about wholesaling? You got really kind of a unique you know, story, I think, man, where, uh, you know, you, you did a prison bid, you know, you come out and you're trying to figure out how to make things work and how to, you know, manage, you know, having an F on your record, right? Like, talk about that real fast, man. Like, what was that process like? How did you really find out about wholesaling? And when did you really start making some headway with it at the same time? Definitely, definitely. So it, it's always been about the grind, right? So I, I, ended, up, I ended up going to prison, chasing a check, and that's definitely one thing you tell us not to do, right? Don't yeah. chase your business and, and no aspect of life. But ended up doing eight and a half years in prison for that. Came home, got back to the grind, right? Started a family. You know, I have a beautiful wife, two, three beautiful kids. Um, and once again, you know, you just, you know, you're trying to provide, you're trying to put food on the table, right? And you don't want to struggle forever. Uh, so I was in fast food for another 15 years. Uh, before I landed in real estate. And my brother had been telling me about real estate. Shout out to my brother, Stefan. He had been telling me about real estate for years because he just knew anything I lock into, I just, I go hard, right? He just kept telling me, you need to do this real estate. You need to do this real estate. And I kept pushing them off. And um, I ended up getting into real estate July, 2020, the YouTube university way, right? And um, just start soaking everything up, started taking action, you know, bandit signs, calling sellers, pulling lists, but just all over the place. And, um, you know, having running away from mentorship, having running away from a coach, like I can just figure it out myself. I always do. Right. But I really don't. But um, so I joined you Black Friday. You had the Black Friday sale popping. I saw you on a, like a cold call challenge video. And I was like, man, I got to lock in with my guy, Chris, see what see what he about. And what I didn't know was you had a whole community behind you. Right. So it wasn't even about you at that point. It was really about the you, all the no support you got from just taking action. And um, and here we are, you know, two years later. And, you know, it's been the best two years of my life for real. No doubt, man. So let's let's talk a little bit, guys. Right. So, you know, John, you hit your first big deals. You said 2019. Thabit, you started getting some traction in 2020. So I think there's a lot of confusion. Right. Like we never know what the first check is going to be. We don't know if it's going to be a big bag. We don't know if it's going to be a little bag. Wholesale is one of those businesses where you've got to invest capital, right? And in return on that capital, really what that looks like is you don't know exactly what the dollar figure is going to be, right? You're just anticipating something coming in, trying to get a lead in, a seller that's interested in selling. So what was y'all's first deals like? Like what type of money uh, did y'all make on your very first deal? So first deal you close um so john we're gonna take your john we know you are og man we know you i ain't gonna age you man i ain't gonna you know i ain't gonna say how old you are all right but we know you got some years on you all right me and thabby got the grades though me and thabby got the grades all right but john we ain't gonna talk about uh, we ain't talking back about 2010 man we talking about 2019 what was that first deal when you started really getting the swing of things oh man like 
Well, the first, the, the, all right. So it's, it's, it's a backstory to the 2019 because it, it was, you know, the, the, the circle around me wasn't all the way hooked yet. So my first big deal right. was like 2013 to me at that time. And that was like 11,000. Um, all right. So, 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 that was so like, in 2013, yeah. you make 11,000, but you don't, but at that time, no, to be fair, you're only doing you, you, what I call, at the time, at the time, all right, respectfully, all right, respectfully. At the time, <laughs> at the time, right, you're um, you're like an NBA journeyman, right? Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know the cat John in the league. He in the league now. He he got an NBA contract, all right, but he he up and he on the ten days. He up he going between teams, but he getting a check a month. All right, getting a check a month. Yeah. All right, that's where you were really at with it. Fast forward to 2019, you get yeah. you get. Was it a super max or was it what kind of deal did you get? Hey man, it was it was nice, man. You know, I did I did a thirty nine thousand dollar deal. So once hold I did on, that, I was like, hold on, 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 hold on. 2019, first, yeah. you know. Yeah. When they called you up, when they called you up, when they called you up, all right. First check was thirty nine thousand. Yeah, that was that was yeah thirty nine thousand, man. What'd you spend that on, bro? I'm just I'm just asking. All right, respectfully, respectfully. Oh. What did you thirty? Because I know you, man. John. I've known you for a very long time. All right. Yeah. Some some people. Some people you like they hit the lottery, you like, yeah, I mean he gonna he gonna go invest in something, you know. Some people though they hit you like, man, he about to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He about to go a little crazy. What did you do with thirty nine thousand dollars, man? Hey man, at first the first thing I did was I got I got a little I, I paid off some bills, of course. I no got doubt. everything caught up. You know what I mean? And had I had fun, I had fun that summer, I had a lot of fun. Um, but I kind of went crazy, like for our system. I was like, yeah, all right, so I'm, I'm going to get everything. I'm going to get like ringless voicemails. I'm going to get like text blasts. I'm going to get like, I'm getting everything. I'm going to order some more band designs with the website. I'm, you know, I kind of went crazy, man, you know? So, <laughs> so let's talk about this real fast, right? Dab is laughing yeah. right now because he can identify to this. Okay. So, so you make thirty nine thousand. You've been plugging at this thing for a long time. In all seriousness, right? You're doing a deal or two a year for a long time. Yeah. Twenty nineteen, yeah. things really start moving for you. You, you close a big deal, thirty nine thousand dollars. That's more than I made when I had a full time job before I got into real estate. Right? Me too. Yeah. yeah. I remember at one point we talked. You was waiting tables or something, right? So it's like delivering pizza. I was delivering pizza, pizza, man. All right, so thirty nine thousand. Yeah. That's you get. Look, you give a brother like you, my first deal thirty nine thousand. Man, yeah, I'm coming back with zero, bro. That's that's you know me. Listen, listen, two thousand ten, Chris. Man, and ain't no telling where that money might end up. We ain't even gonna talk about that. All right, so you you close this thing thirty nine thousand. Yeah, man. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Yeah. 39,000 and you were in this mode of not that I'm going to blow the bag but I'm I want to do the right thing this time. I, I I finally hit it. It finally worked the way I knew it could work. Everybody who thought I was crazy, everybody who doubted me, everybody who told me this wasn't going to happen, everybody who told me for all these years I was wasting my time cuz that's 9 years, by the way. That was 9 years. So 9 years people telling you wasting your time to give it up. You're working odd and in jobs. You're just plugging away. 2019, boom. You hit 39,000. Let's round up. Let's call it a 40 piece. All right. You hit a 40 piece. And you're trying to do things the right way. But you say to yourself, okay, now I've made some real money. Now I want to go bigger. What were some of the things you went and spent that money on? You're on mute, John. You're on mute. Oh, like, like I was saying, y'all hear me now? Yeah. Am I good? Yep. Okay, cool. 
All right, so yeah, I, I mean, I bought more band designs. I went and got a website. Um, I, I spent more marketing systems like ringless voicemails, text messages. I got auto. I got the auto dialer. I bought data, of course. Just basically everything. I was any and everything I saw. Like you know, it's like Shani yeah. Object Syndrome has a hundred. Like any and so everything that- I saw. I'm over. That's what I was about to say, yeah. man. From the from the from the from the list that you just ran down, all right. It sounds like you went out and bought damn near everything. All right, you went and got the VAs. How many VAs you go get? No, at that time I didn't get a VA. I just I was still I was still solo with it. I all just right, had so all of this solo. stuff going on. So you're going out and buying all the tools, right? You're buying all. The prop streams, the batches, the just anything that's out there that you can get your hands on that you think you can buy to get a competitive advantage, you're going and spending that money. All right. Uh let's all let's right. jump to let's jump to Thabit real quick. So Thabit, all right. First deal for you. I don't know if it was a 40 piece or not. What was that first deal no, like? Know. Yeah, John was going really crazy, man. John, John was really going crazy to get 40 bat 40 piece. On the first deal, that's nuts, man. Was really for nothing. No doubt, man. What you? What about you, Thabit? She was real light. I mean, she was real light. Uh, it was it was a twenty one hundred piece. That's all that was, man. Twenty one hundred piece. It was three thousand, but I had to pay the seller closing fees. Okay. So that assignment dropped from the twenty one real quick. This is this is by the way for everybody watching. I just want to be really clear. So this is how you know. Uh, and, and I know y'all might got, you know, friends or family that may be on here or something, I understand. But this is how you know when somebody's starting to get a little bit of money. I just want to be really clear about that. When when you start talking to somebody and they talk about $2,100 as being light, all right, when that becomes light, all right, uh, you, you know, God is good. You're doing all right. You're doing all right. So, Dabit, you made $2,100. You, you're, you, so this is a different grind. This is a good conversation. So, John, you get a lot of money fast. Thabit, you've got to build more into your money. I know both you guys are into you at this time. I remember when you guys are closing these deals, you know, things are starting to rock and roll. <laughs> I want both of y'all to kind of talk about, we'll start with Thabit, because we know John kind of, boom, 40000 He started to go a little bit crazy. Thabit, how did you start to get some traction in this business in terms of wholesaling? And then what was the moment for you where you're like, whoa, like I'm I'm spending money right now and I don't know if I know exactly what I'm doing with it. Mm, okay. Yeah, so so the traction came from just following the blueprint, right? Once again, I, I got into the U. Uh, you know, you have a full blown course. And you know, I literally jumped in to to the unit one or whatever it was, and I just followed the blueprint. And, you know, you, you gave a play in the blueprint and I just ran it literally three days in. I run the play seven days later. I get my first deal. And after six months of so me and my brother literally just talking about it every day, like, yo, first check going to be sixty five thousand. <laughs> literally six months after that first contract and it won't sixty five. Right. But All right. Once again, just being in the U, you know, seeing people like John, um, seeing people like Andre, bam, seeing these folks posting these checks, locking these deals up, like I knew I had my hands on the right thing. Uh, but it took probably another year for me to gain real traction once I kind of got into the one-on-one program and, um, you know, just got some one-on-one coaching. I mean, that opened up my eyes to a whole nother world of just, you know, real estate strategizing. And that's when it took off. Literally, the end of, of 2021, it was a game changer. You went, you went crazy. So, so all right. So you you closed this deal. Only 2100. Only all right. You closed this deal. All right. That gives you proof of concept. You and your brother been talking about this. Like yo, like six months. We plug in. We going at it. You getting to you. I know what play you talking about. We ain't giving that out on YouTube. All right. I know what play you talking about. You get into you. You get in the course. Oh, less than a week. All right. You got something that, that comes in. It's the play. You get it under contract. You end up making 2100 So you it sounds like you with that but just really needed really proof of concept to know that this was a thing. Like to know that this could work and was possible. 
you start grinding, really kind of going crazy with it. I remember you you, you joined the one on one program. We worked on a lot of different things um, and you really came out of that thing like you came out of the one on one program like on fire. I remember you came in. Let's, you know, let's just be honest. David. You came in a little, you know, is optimistic a fair is a fair word. David, do you remember the time we're on a one on one coaching call? John, I said to David, I said, David, you know, what have you learned so far? Like, are you, what are you getting out of this so far? And he's like, nothing. I'm like, damn, son, where'd you find this? I'm like, dang, bro, I'm like, nothing. We on the coach. He's saying this to me, John. This is face to face. You get what I'm saying? He said, nah, I ain't getting nothing. So I'm like, well, hold up. <laughs> I'm like, hold up. I said, so, David, David, I said, if you haven't gotten anything, just tell me then what you have gotten. All right. So just list out, if you don't mind, what you have got. Now, Thabit, I don't know if you remember this, Thabit. Thabit starts listing out a whole bunch of stuff. He got a whole he got a whole list. Right. It's a grocery list of stuff that he didn't learn. Right. You know why he said that? Just because he hadn't made any money yet. All right. Because this is this is back when Thabit was still thinking based on the money. All right. So Thabit starts taking the plays from the one on one sessions starts going nuts like i remember you shot at that thing like a rocket bro like you started really going crazy you started touching a lot of money very quickly all right so let's let's talk about that because both of y'all get into a position where you've now got large sums of money right and and to be clear like i teach both of you guys and i teach all my students just because your business got money does not mean that you yourself have money. And that's important to understand, right? But you guys are likely how I was at the time when I first started. Your business makes some money. Listen, man, after expenses, that's all me. <laughs> all right. If the if the business makes 10000 and it only costs me 1000 I got nine racks. I mean, I got, I got nine racks, all right? Now, <laughs> I didn't know any better at the time. Were y'all thinking along the same lines when y'all started getting this money going like that? Or where, where were y'all at? Go ahead, John. Uh, yeah, I mean, out there 39, I was like, yeah, about, about 30 of this. This is me. <laughs> <laughs> John, so what you, like, what you do with $30,000, man? Hey, man, I told you, it's still vague, man. You know, we had a lot of no, fun no. for the summer. No, no. All right. So, so John, you got that perspective. You're like, listen, I'm going to tuck nine, but 30, I'm going crazy. All right. 30, I'm going crazy. Dabit, you start making some money. All right. Because, Dabit, I remember one month you had like, and, and it seems like this is every month now, but I know at this time when you come out the one-on-one -on -one program, I think like a month or two after you got out of it, you had like three or four closings or something like that lined up. Uh, on some different deals so these deals start to kind of come to be the money from these starts to hit in are you putting all that money away are you like you going to the family like right, let's go hey, well y'all trying to go crazy what y'all trying to do what, what what were you doing with that at the time yeah honestly so um so I, I've been full-time real estate for a year now since July 4th July 4th was my freedom day you know from my job uh, I went full time, right? But you know, I didn't do it. I, I didn't do it strategically. You know, like I literally jumped out there. I didn't have a runway of savings. I didn't have six months worth of bills and expenses. You know, I jumped out there with one check, right? I had a deal that was closed and it was fourteen k. I had a little money saved up from work, but it was probably like five thousand. So I literally stepped into real estate full time with twenty k. And I said, we just going to give it all or nothing, right? But still not fully having to play, still not fully developed in real estate, never really had, you know, a legit business. Yeah. So I'm just trying to figure it out. But got into the one-on-one, -on -one, you gave us some strategy. But at that point, I'm six months into my full-time real estate journey. I'm already behind the eight ball. Like I'm eating off of a couple of little checks, right? right? I, I kind of get in the hole a little bit. So once that money hits... You know, like you said, I came out of the one-on-one -on -one program. Sixty um, February was a sixty thousand dollar month, 
Mm. And that was just on my end. You know, there were a couple of JV plays. It legit was 100,000 K. A lot of money, man. It was on the table in February, but I had to get stuff caught up. And then, you know, kind of like John, which John mentioned, you know, I got these grandiose dreams. Oh, we about to have this is about to be a multi million dollar business, baby. So we get in the game, <laughs> we get in the systems, we getting it all, you know. And oh, yes. you know, in the background, you know, when you get that pack off, you put it all back. Yeah. So I pay all some stuff and I put the rest in, and we just going full throttle. Got it, got it. All right. So and that and that's a great point, actually, you make, right? So you're just leaning at that point on the principles that you know, right? On the concepts that you know. Hey, I done made some money. If I want to flip this up into something else, I got to put it back out to go to work, right? I got I to get some work and I got to put it to work. I understand, right? So you just kind of got that same mentality with this because, you know, we're all creatures of what it is that we know, right? We're all limited to whatever knowledge we have at the particular moment that we're required to make any sort of decision, all right? So you get to this point, you're making these decisions. John, you as well, you know, ironically, ironically neither one of you guys are asking me all right but you guys you guys are making ironically all right ironically you guys are making all this because i would have helped you save it all right but sometimes you gotta learn your goddamn lesson all right so you guys go out here you're making all this money right you're starting to roll all right and it's like the topic right of this live tonight it's like all right well how do you start managing your success how you start managing money as a business and we've done guest calls we've had conversations about you know, how to manage money once you start to make it. But I want to talk about that a little bit and, and some very kind of clear specifics, right? Because John, you know, uh, you, when I had David Richter come in and we did the profit first phone call, uh, we kind of started talking about that. You started, um, you know, you started rolling, right? Like you were like locked in on that. You're like, yeah, I'm going to do profit first. I understand the concepts. Do you want to talk about profit first real quick and kind of briefly explain what that is? Um, you don't got to break down the percentages, but just kind of break down the concept. Um, and, and guys, profit first is a business concept. It's a business really accounting concept that when you make a portion of money, then knowing how that money should be distributed. You know, again, so myself included, these guys included, you know, you're young, you start making money. It's like, OK, I got ten thousand dollars. It costs, and I, I spent a thousand. I feel like I got none. That's just how I feel. And but that's not the reality. The reality of it is, in my world, the reality of it is, if I make ten, I only got three. Right, I only got three. All right. So John, talk a little bit about profit first. What it means, kind of what those concepts are, man. All right. So it's basically, in a nutshell. To me, to simplify it, it was just allocating the funds where they would respectively supposed to go to as soon as the money comes in versus looking at it like, you know, I got this one lump sum of money. I can do this. I can do this. And I can do this with this large amount. Because um, every time I try to do it like that, I ended up broke it at the end of the year and spending all that shit. So it just wasn't, it, it wasn't working, you know. So, yeah, that's basically what it is. So now as the money comes in, it's already broken down percentage-wise where it's going to go. So talk about some of these percentage categories that you may have. So, like, you said money comes in and it gets broken down. Right. Are you able to tell us maybe how that what that breakdown might even look like for you right now? Yeah. So just on the smaller end, it's like personal account. Then I got, like, a miscellaneous account for the house. Got business expenses. I got taxes, I got business profit, and a couple more accounts up in there. All right. So, yeah, let's talk about this. This is great, man. This is what people need to know and understand because this, this is what we're talking about at the end of the day is how you really run a business, right? You know, I think a lot of us, man, we get into this thing and we got that we got that hustle energy because it's, it's, it's all we know, right? We got that hustle energy to it. All we know is the hustle, Right. And we get into it and we just don't know any better. Again, we're limited to the knowledge that we have in the moment that we have to make decisions, right? Unfortunately, sometimes we get down the road on those decisions and we realize that it wasn't the right. Some of these decisions you can get back, some you can't. But let's talk about this, right? So we're breaking the money out. You make 10000 This is what I heard, right? You got uh, your profit because we call it profit first. So we got to pay ourselves first, right? 
So you're paying yourself first. You know, let's say that's 3000 or whatever it might be. But then I hear you, right? So you got a miscellaneous account. And these are different bank accounts, right, John? Different bank accounts. All right. So then you've got a miscellaneous account, you know, just for miscellaneous stuff around the house, things that might come up in case of emergency, AC go out, window gets cracked, right? just, just whatever type right. of stuff. All right. You've got, I'm sure you got a marketing account. You've got a savings account. And so what, what John is really saying, guys, the advice here is when you get a check, you should have predetermined distributions of where that money is supposed to go. Because, because just naturally, when you don't, you're stuck with wherever you think it should go at that point in time. There's no plan to it. There's no thought process surrounding it. It's just like, all right, I got 10000 Let me just, I got to go throw it back out, right? Because that's what we know, right? So, John, you start breaking it down into these different accounts. Thabit, what were you doing, right? So, like, you're making this money. What's your decision making at the time? You know, what kind of struggles are you maybe even dealing with? I know some of the ones that I dealt with when I really first got started. You know, I've got friends and family. I've got you know, marketing, I want to try to grow, I want to try to scale and, you know, all these different things. And, you know, it's an overwhelming feeling at the end of the day, man, you start feeling like you're really getting pulled in a lot of places. Um, and, and, and you get overwhelmed in your decision making. Where was that for you, man? What was that like uh, when you were trying to get that stuff done? Yeah. So, you know, once again, you know, you really gave us the play. Uh, like you said, David came back, came on back in um, beginning of 2021, right? And uh, he went through a whole, you know what I'm saying, whole live on it for us, breaking it down and percentages and all that. And I kept it in my back pocket. But, but, I, but I washed them jeans and, that, and, that, and I lost that. You know what I'm saying? I didn't pull it out of my back pocket. <laughs> Yo, no, hold on, Tab. I got I to I gotta take that, man. That was smooth. So you, you, put, you tucked it in the back pocket, but you washed the jeans. Yeah, so it, it was gone. So it's out, of, it's out of here. It's gone. And when the money came through, that was the furthest thought from my mind. Now, I was putting away tax money. We got to take care of Uncle Sam. I was putting that money to the side off of every deal. But everything else was, once again, on full time, right? So this is my income. So, you know, what you just said, right? I'm looking at this like my money. This ain't, you know, this ain't the business money. This is my right. money now. You know, I've worked for years helping other people manage their money. I know what to do with my money. But I, I really did. And I, the biggest thing that I learned through this process was like money management doesn't start when you have money. Mm. Right. So when you when when you when you brought him on, I didn't even have money at that time. I was still struggling. Like, shoot, I need to get the accounts. I need to get the money to put into the accounts. So it wasn't mm. even hold on, hold, on, hold on. Stay there. Stay there. So. All right. So I, I, I. All right. So just so everybody who's not in the you understands. Right. So I have a guest speaker come in. A uh, guy that I know personally, actually somebody who I went to, all right, when I had financial issues back in 2017, and, and a lot of that came from, from not properly managing money, right? I go have a conversation with him at the time, and he's like, hey, are you doing profit first? I'm looking at this guy like he's crazy. Right? I'm like, bro, I'm like, pay myself 30 I'm like, man, you're crazy. What do you mean pay myself 30 What do you mean put money over here for this or put money over there for that? So you're starting to kind of have to have a lot of these experiences, right? Where you realize, right? You get to this point where you're realizing, wait, like, damn, I finally done got the money. Now, everything that me and my brother was talking about for six months, all that sweat equity, all that work, all those, all those late nights crying and, and talking to the wife and telling her how it's going to work. And she looking at you. I know she, I know she looking at you like, man, this if you don't take his ass back to work, all right, if he don't get back to work, all right, so you're dealing with a lot of doubt. The problem with doubt, right, because I had that too, right? I think, John, I'm sure you probably did too. Just not even from a spouse. I'm talking about just in general or from yourself. That's when doubt really gets dangerous, when it's from yourself, right? And so when we become doubtful, we actually end up making bad decisions, Right? Is this ever going to happen for me again? Am I ever going to be able to pay this off? Am I ever going to be able to take my family here? Am I ever going to be able to help this person with this? Am I ever going to be able to do this or do that? And so we're always restrictive to the moment. We always want what we want in the moment. 
and and we're just that's just human nature that's just who we are so thabit once you realize this what do you do about it though like what 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 do you start running into what are problems that you guys start running into right like i've named a couple that are common um i think for a lot of people that start to have success especially in our community you know uh friends and family i've been seeing that jay-z um uh video going around the last two days where he's in the video talking about managing and dealing with friends or family because it's hard right like outside looking in coming from where a lot of us come from at the end of the day i, I know for myself i know majority of my family lacks resources financial resources educational resources mental health resources just lacks resources right and so inevitably if the perspective is hey you're the guy you're the one you're the woman in your family you're the guy in your family that figures something out that we we don't know we haven't been able to figure out ourselves you know um you're that person right and what starts to happen right how do, how do we start to to manage that um what were some of the things that you guys were running into at that time yeah you know you always want to be able to provide take care of your family do what you got to do and I, I leaned in, into that heavy right and it wasn't like it was big lump sums you know it could just be kind of those small things the birthdays and uh you know the graduations and just little stuff you know people have little needs and you, you know you throw some money here you throw some money there because you don't have your books locked down once again this is just money that i have at my disposal right david what type of gifts were you giving out though were you were you nothing going major there? man it wasn't no rovers and stuff like you know <laughs> like that all right just, just stuff, stuff. and, and but see stuff. it's you know I, I liked that it was small stuff i'm gonna tell you why real quick because i think we don't realize how much the small shit adds up right like i can't tell y'all man how many times i have gone through my books and those 500 dollars, 300 dollars charges those a thousand dollar charges and next thing you know you don't spend 10 15 20 30 grand without without even literally without realizing it until you sit down and add it all up and that's why i always talk about that concept of it's like when you got a hundred dollar bill right i talked to you guys about this the other night on the coaching call and it's like and again i know it ain't just me i know it ain't just me but when i, I remember i used to work i was telling you, i used to work at king's domain all right now this is they made me shave my beard all right i'm in king's dominion john can you match me with no beard bro i'm in king's dominion no beard right looking looking crazy by the way just looking real crazy all right flagrant all right now every other friday i get my paycheck I'm at Kings of Man up here, up the up up the street, right, 95. I get my paycheck. I lead a job. There's no a, there's no bank right there, all right. But three exits up, there's a Wells Fargo, all right. I'm at the Wells Fargo. I'm talking to the teller. I'm like, listen, can you cash my check? They like, how much would you like to put in your account, Mr. Jefferson? I'm like, put in my account. I get paid again in two weeks. What do I need to put money in the account for? Uh, man if you don't run me my whole check so i'm in i'm in the bank i'm telling the teller the check ain't for nothing but eleven hundred dollars right they i don't work i didn't clean the whole park for two hundred for twelve hundred dollars every two weeks so i get twelve hundred dollars cash i'm telling them hey i want the whole check so i was one of those people i'm walking around i'm going to the barber shop i'm going to dinner i'm going to fast food restaurant i got i got eleven hundred dollars in my pocket i'm and when I got to pay for something, y'all, I'm, I'm picking up the whole what? So if the lady, if the lady, if the lady said, hey, it's only five dollars. She said, hey, you know, sir, it's a stick of gum. All right. in a soda. It's only five dollars. All right. Man, come on. You know, I'm pulling the whole wad out, man. Don't play with me. man. I'm pulling the whole wad out. All right. Yeah. I know I ain't the only one. I know I'm not the only one. All right. I'm pulling out the whole wad. Here's the problem I always found with this concept. And I did it for a long time. Any time that I spent that 100, it was good as gone. It felt like some money when it was 100.
But once you pay that five dollars and you got to get ninety five dollars back in some twenties, a couple tens, and a couple fives, that's that's gone. That's gone. And I I, I found that really business kind of operates a lot the same way, where if you feel like it's your money. When you have no plan for where it's supposed to go, it's not accounted for, you know, hey, these are predetermined spots. When I get my paycheck this Friday, I already know this is going to the miscellaneous account. This is going to the savings account. This is going to the retirement, whatever type of accounts you need to have set up. I, I didn't have any of those just like Dabit, just like John. So Dabit, back to you, right? You're getting this money. You got a hundred dollar bill in your hand. You're starting to break that hundred dollars down, right? You're, it's starting to turn into some twenties. What's the point where you're realizing, damn, I don't got a hundred dollar bill no more? Yeah, so you know, at this point, I had hired about twelve VAs, um, and I, I kept seven of them. Hold so on, whoa, 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 <laughs> yo, wait, bro, wait, wait. Now, see, this is, John, he definitely didn't call me on this one. He definitely ain't called me on this one. I know for a fact he ain't called me on this one. All right, hold on, son. So you, wait a second, wait a second. So you hit a, you hit 60 for the month. Is that the most money you had ever made in a month before? I'm assuming. It was almost the most money I made in a year. All right, so this is almost the most money that you, in a month, in less than 30 days, this is more money than you've ever made in an entire year. When I got into you, I only had fifty extra dollars a month. It was that's it why, was a and that's that's why you came in on the dollar special. All right, you came in on the dollar special. All right, so now you got forty nine dollars. All right, so you went from joining the program. You joined my program. You had fifty dollars in your account. Extra each month. Extra each month. Now you get to a point. Where you've got sixty thousand dollars, what is the time? What is the time gap between that? Like a, a year or what was it? Yeah, yeah, about a year. Yeah, a little over a year. All right, and so you're doing deals up to that, but this is when you start really getting. You know, we start to get that stride a little bit. Sometimes we get that walk about us where things we got something figured out, right? So, when do you get into the point, then, Thabit, where you're like, well? Wait a second. Like I said, man, I don't got a hundred dollars anymore. I got a bunch of twenties. I got some tens. I got a, a bunch of ones. What's what is that moment then like? And then how are you starting to process that? Because I think a lot of business owners, I fell victim to that. It's something that's not talked about enough in entrepreneurship. We always talk about the highs. Nobody's ever having any conversation whatsoever about the lows, about the reality of how things function. What's your mindset at that time? Where do you feel like you're being pulled at? And, and how are you starting to manage? Yeah, so yeah, when, when the money, you know, when I'm looking at that hundred and I'm like, man, it's just some wands, right? You know, it, it was it was kind of a messed up moment. You know, that's really when I reached out to you, right? You know, you worked so hard all these years to kind of get to this place. Once again, you really just chasing, chasing a check. That's all I'm doing is just chasing a check, right? So I get to the point of where I get the check and you feel like, well, I ain't, I ain't made it. Like I'm not balling. I, you know, I don't, I don't got M's in the bank yet. Right. But right. Wow, I really have more money than I've ever made in any year. And I'm working 60, 70 hours a week, coming home, investing in a business mentally, emotionally, family, all that stuff. And you finally get to that point and you look back. Like I said, it got to a point of where my business was like 20 a clip. Right. Mm. And that, and, but you got to But I'm, I'm looking at the long term saying, well, it's going to all come back. Right. And the thing about this real estate is you can't say I'm going to definitely do X amount of deals this month because all type type of stuff happens. And, and, and one of the other big things that I learned from you is, you know, you really have to you have to think long term. Right. You can't once again, you can't chase a check. You know, you have to chase a vision. And when you do that, the process will work itself out. But that's not what I was doing. Right. I just thought it was going to be as simple as, you know, I was telling John, you know, I went out and bought sixty five thousand records at one time. Right. <laughs> Yo, no, and we blasted. We blasted. 
Stab it. Hold up, bro. Hold on. Hold on. Stab it. You really went off, bro. You really snapped off. Hold on. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. We nah, you went that. off, bro. I bought yeah, like we seventy five hundred. We got to talk sixty five thousand. <laughs> yeah, we gotta we gotta talk off. about this real quick. This is good. All right, so for you guys who don't know, all right, if you wholesale, part of how you find people to wholesale their houses is we buy data records, we buy a list, um, and those lists generally cost, let's just say, ten to fifteen cents per record, roughly. All right. And so you buy these lists, but then you still have to skip trace them to get the phone numbers. And then you then also then have to still call them and text them, all of which cost a little bit of money. All right. Depending on how many records. And so generally, just to give you all a rough idea, generally people are going to buy, I don't know, a thousand, you know, no, no more than five thousand records generally. All right. People who are getting started. Once you start rolling, the problem then becomes of knowing how many records you should get because they're only 15 cents a piece. If you've got, if you've made 60,000 in a month, you can afford some records, right? So you go out, you buy 65,000 records. Dab it. Was this all in one market? Was this in multiple markets? Talk about that a little bit because 12 VAs is a lot of VAs. All right. I don't even know how you were managing all these VAs. Well, that was over the course. So I had at the most, I think, eight at one time. All right. So you got eight at one time. Do you also have a lead manager as well? Are you wearing a lot of these hats and trying to coordinate everybody? What was that looking? Yeah. So I'm training a lead manager. I'm training an acquisitions manager. You know, I'm really, once again, I'm trying to build this team. Yeah. Right and my boy Keith, and I talked to him like every other day. He like, bro. Like you might be going a little fast, and I'm just like, <laughs> I, I, I see, I see, I see you later, right? Shout out to OG Keith because you. Just, let's be real though. Let's be let's be real tonight. Shout out to OG Keith, and that's my dog. But let's be real in your mind because I know how this goes because I've I've been through this before. I think that it, and I think you're about to say this. See, sometimes when we get that advice, we starting to get those conversations from people. We really looking at it like, hey, bro, I'm I'm about to go past you, dog. We not even talking. Just because we was talking the same stuff last week, bro, the price went up, dog. I made 60000 this month, right? And so when you got that kind of money on you, it's just like when I would go leave Kings Dominion and go to Wells Fargo and cash that check and put $1,100 in my pocket. It starts to create a certain level of confidence that could be warranted or unwarranted. And so did you start to get to a level of confidence where you're like, I hear you, OG, but you don't even know what type of plays I'm on right now. Or were you more like, man, you could be right, but I ain't never been here before, man. I'm going to trust it. No, I'm going to be honest with you. Once again, you know, we have a community here, right? So a lot of us, you know, we started in the same place. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, we started trying to figure this thing out, and you running this play and that play, and it don't feel like it's working. So when y'all, when we start running the plays, like, all I got, we running the plays, right? And when you start running them, you start becoming successful together. At this point, we pulling and pushing each other, right? So it's like, you might step out a little further ahead, but you're going to give me the game to catch up. When I catch up, I might step out a little further ahead. I'm going to give you some game as well. Right. Yeah. So yeah. My, my Keithan gave me a ton of game too to help put me in position. Yeah. And now I feel like okay, like I don't learn some stuff. I don't stepped out a little further. Let me go ahead and step out here because I'm telling him. Shout out to Keith. And once again, he's still doing his nine to five. He's still grinding in real estate, making hella bread. But I'm like, bro, you need to lead at W two. Like, right. Right. You know, right. You can do. So I'm really trying to show him at the same time. Like, boom. I'm gonna show you how to make it happen, baby. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. And, and and that's one of the things I love about the you uh, is be is is that. And this was my hope, man. When I started this thing back in 2020, man, my hope was that it would turn into something where you guys weren't just coming to learn from me. That you guys were learning from each other. Y'all were supporting each other. Y'all was loving each other. Y'all was building real relationships, real friendships, real business relationships. And it's been dope and beautiful to see that happen. Uh, but I, I feel you, right? Like, 
this you made you actually made a really great point, dog. Like we're all we're at one point at the same spot. And that and that's and that's at the inception of this. We're not doing we haven't done any deals yet. We are trying to figure it out. Right now, we side by side. We at the starting line side by side. Once that race starts, though, some people are gonna sprint out faster than the others because it, it's not a it's not a hundred meter dash. That's not what we do. That's not what this is. That's not what I teach. I've been in business over 12 years. I teach how to build a business and stay in business. So sometimes this, this is a marathon we running right here. The problem with a marathon is sometimes the person who shoots out the gap first, they're not going to be there on the second leg or the third leg. Sometimes they're going to be ahead of you. Sometimes they're still going to be beside you. Sometimes they're going to be behind you, and they might need you to look back a little bit and give them some encouragement, right? That's how business works. That's how the you functions for sure. And, and and I teach all of y'all, right? Like we we love each other. We support each other. We carry each other. No student left behind. That's how we rock out. But you're getting to that point where you're developing that confidence. You're getting to that point where you're feeling, you're feeling good about what you got going on, right? And so we just start to make kind of some decisions and error. John, I'm going to jump over to you, bro. What are some things that you were doing where you also felt like that 40,000 came in, maybe you're on to the next deal by then, but now you're starting, what's the moment where you're realizing what's going on with you at the time where you're realizing, damn, I'm having success, but I'm not managing this correctly. And I don't even know if I know what I'm doing right now. So for me, it was, uh, I mean, we started, I started getting all these systems. But I wasn't I wasn't getting any closings. Mm. So mind you, and I'm I'm living off this money. You know what I'm saying? It's like month to month. I'm, I'm this how you take care of your family, got, whole whole nine. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's just as it starts to dwindle down, like this, what's this? This is the end of 2019. Because I, I screwed it up twice. I did it in 2019 and I did it in 2020. So that's when oh, we had man. the project. Right, there you go. Yeah. First call. <laughs> All right, they, I remember. Listen, we on the yeah. proper first call. You, I remember you sent me a text after the call. You like, brother, this right on time. This right. Yeah, yeah I, I, was I said, So you was right in that spot again, again for the second yeah. time. Right. So, so was that call then? Was that call where I had David come in and talk with everybody? Was that call a turning point for you? Where you're like, yo, hold on, wait a second, like. Maybe this is why that keeps happening to me. Yeah. Yeah, it was like, it was like, that's what I've been missing. Like, for me, it was like, yeah, I'm straight. Man, I'm going to be real. I ain't even read the whole book. I, I read mm -hmm. how to do that shit. And when it, my fault for the, for the kids. But I was like, no, I was no, like, no, no. Listen, right. John, John, let's check it out real fast, right? When, yeah. you're up, when you're setting up a YouTube video, they ask you in the settings, they say, uh, is this 18 and up or is this, you know, is, is this is this PG 13? All right. Wrong to say so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hit I hit the I hit the yes over 18. You good. All right. All right good. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. But I would yeah, I ain't even finished reading the whole book, man. I just grabbed the concept and ran with it. I got the book right here. Yeah, hold the book up, John, if you can, man. I want everybody to see this book because if if you're a business owner in real estate, man. There's a real estate version and there's a, a general version that John has up right now. Both are great yeah. reads. Both are really great reads, John. Go ahead. But but I, I pretty much once I once I saw what was going on, because he pretty much had like the diagram in the call as well. So once got I kind of got the concept, I just I just ran with it. And and that's been that's been like the biggest the business changer for me now it's still a whole lot of room for growth i still i ain't running this thing perfect you know sure. i'm still i'm still messing up now i did it again you know what i'm saying at the end of this year as far as went on I, uh jumping in a bunch of markets when i hired a va and did all this stuff i did it again but fortunately this time i had profit uh profit first in place so i ain't hurt yeah. myself too bad yeah man you know? so that's and that's the i think that's the point about profit first before we move on and and again, guys, we're just talking about when knowing how to when a business makes money. Cause I I I, I deal with this a lot. People see how much money my business might make, or what type of revenue comes in from flipping a house or this, that, and the third.
But that do, that doesn't mean I have that money. That doesn't mean that's my personal money. All right, I'm I'm broke. I'm broke. Rich Point got that. All right, Rich Point got that. All right. So when the money comes in, all right, you're in these positions, profit first, guys. It's just giving you guidelines. It's giving you a found fi financial foundation to your business where it's like swimming with a life jacket. It's, it's literally swimming with a life jacket. If somebody takes you and throws you off a boat, middle of the ocean, if you at least got on a life jacket, you know you're not going to drown. That much you know, right? You know at... I might get bit by a shark. It might take somebody a long time to find me. I might get dehydrated. I don't know what's going to happen, but I at least know I'm not going to drown. That's what Profit First is. It's taking a look at what money you're making and giving yourself a safety vest. Hey, let's create some categories. And, and everybody's categories are going to be different depending on what your, your business outlook is, how much you want to pay yourself. But give yourself kind of some guidelines to work off of so you're not in one of these positions where, again, you, you have no idea, you know, what to do. Um, David, what were some of the other things that, that, that you ran into uh, in making money and handling success as an entrepreneur uh, for yourself as well, man? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, outside of the VAs, obviously the business expenses. And once again, just, just wanting to really move too fast. I mean, that, that was the biggest thing, not pacing myself. Um, you know, not planning out my business. I know I asked you, uh, you know, what type of runway do you want to have for your business? Right. Because I wasn't even thinking about it like that. It was just like, I'm going to get another check. Another deal is going to come through. I'm going to get another check. We're going to put that into the business versus, you know, I need X amount of dollars for expenses that can carry me when stuff does fall through the cracks, when deals don't go through. Right. If I don't get anything else on the board, um, so those are really just the biggest things that I that I struggle with throughout that process. Yeah, man. So let's speak on that for a second. So I think something that's important for everybody to know and understand is any business, any I don't care what you do. I don't care if you got a lemonade stand on the side of the street. I don't care if you develop in sky, you know, uh, you know, what do they call them? You know, skyscrapers. All right. If you don't have a foundational plan of systems and processes in which you do business, again, we are only limited. We are always limited, rather. We're always limited to the knowledge that we have in the moment in which we must make a decision. So when it comes time to make these decisions, because remember, we're, it's a marathon. We're in the middle of a race. We're in the middle of a race. So, see, we don't have time once you end the race, once the marathon has started. The training, that's over. Right? Go, going to speak to the medical team to see what type of treatment you need. If you got any health issues, that's over. Right? Figuring out your strategy. What are you doing here? What are you doing there? That's over. That's all of this stuff is done before the race ever starts. See, the problem in business, though, is most people, they get started and they just go run. They just go run. They just go out there and just start running. There's no foundation. There's no strategy. There's no, uh, hey, this is the concept in which I want to go about doing my business. There's no, hey, this is what I'm going to do with my money. Once I make it. People don't think that way. People just go outside and start running. What I'm trying to really encourage people to do is just take a second. And have it. It's like that conversation we had that day in the one-on-one -on -one when I was like, hey, what have you learned so far? Right. That day, everything that you listed out were all foundational system and process oriented items, right? And the reality of it is, is can you make money and not address these things or have these things in order? Of course, you guys did. I did, right? But there will always inevitably come a time where you'll be tested on not having a plan. You'll be tested on not having systems. You'll be tested on not having any processes in which you do business and the reality of it is unfortunately is that in all likeliness something will fail something something will fail right we are in a business right now where everybody all over the internet is talking about the economy and how the market is changing and things are shifting and this this is another another pivotal moment for people 
right? Are you going to assume or trust that the, the same plan that got you here is is the way that you're going to run the rest of the the race, right? Or are you going to pivot and start to make a little bit of adjustment inside your business as well? So, you know, one thing that we talked about also, man, I want to go back to this. I really want to go back to the friends and family piece, man. That was something I struggled with really bad. Uh, me personally, um, when I first got in the business, I was really young. I made a lot of money when I was really young, um, really young in my early 20s. I was making more money than I could fathom wholesaling, flipping houses, things like that. And I started to get pulled in a lot of direction from friends and family. And I'm not even talking about just immediate friends and family, like not just the cats I hang with all the time or the cats I talk to all the time or, you know, my mom, brother, you know, dad stuff. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about wide ranging, right? Because we're in an era of social media. We're talking about what we're doing for a living. We're talking about what success we're having. That's kind of how our industry is set up, right? We talk about a lot of our successes. Not everybody on the outside understands that they don't know that you might have made 10,000, but only paid yourself three, right? Um, how did you guys, or how do you guys currently even manage that, right? I was going into that a minute ago about the whole Jay-Z video that's been going around. How are y'all managing that type of stuff on y'all's end, man? Because I know for me, I had a really tough time telling people no. I, I felt immense guilt. Um, I felt terrible, actually. Like, like, because I felt like I was blessed. I was being so benefited by what I was doing. I, at the time, I didn't have concepts of how to separate my money. I didn't know. Again, like I said, I'm keeping none. Right? So somebody asked me for two and I love them. I'm going to give it to them. That's just how I'm built. That's how I'm cut up. And I, because I, again, I lacked the knowledge at the time in making those decisions. How do you guys balance friends and family? How are you guys, and that's a touchy subject I know, but how are you guys, because I think it's something that has to be talked about. How are you guys managing things like that? Because for me, I believe, I don't believe in just teaching a man to fish. I'm not on that type of shit. I don't believe in that, right? If I'm going to teach you how to fish, I'm going to rock how I rock with my students, all of y'all, right? I'm going to come fish beside you and show you how you run the play, like how you really go run it. So I'm always offering now. I don't I don't give any money to friends or family anymore. I don't help them with anything anymore. When people come to me, unless unless it's a need that fits within health, mental health, you know, something to that aspect. But outside of that, man, I, I'm not associating with it. Right. And that was a decision I had to make years ago. Years ago, I had to make that decision. And I've, I've been better from making that decision. Did I lose some friends in process? Yep. Do I not hear from some family as much? Yep. Have I lost any sleep about it? Nope. So how, how are y'all managing some of that? No, it's, it's a challenge for sure. Right. You know, once again, you know, you get to a point to where, you know, you do have something. Right. Um, and I come from a family, you know, obviously with my background kind of going going to prison, um, you know, I had people who did help right, who were there for me. So you always want to be there for the folks that have been there for you. And now just once again, being a husband, being a father, um, you know, you want to do it all, all that you can. You don't want to say no. Um, you know, you, you want to be the person that, you know, once you've found this way, right, because that's what it that's what it feels like to me. Yeah. Um, you know, you're, you're being there to support for real. No doubt. So John, John, what about you, man? You know, you're dealing with this right now. I want to touch on that a little bit with you too, Pat, but, but John, what about you, man? How are you managing friends and family? How are you handling you make a 40 piece? I know somebody asked you this. John, hey, man. Man. Go, John, go. I, I, I come from a neighborhood where you, you better learn how to say no real quick. Uh, you, you ain't gonna have nothing. So I ain't got hey, I don't even, you know, outside of the you, I don't even post my checks and stuff like that. You know what I mean? The only reason I do it in that space is because I know, you know, we all in the same game. Pretty much ain't nobody come ask me for that and all that. But no, I, don't, no. I, don't, I don't even really go public, like, with how much money I make for real. And then there's certain where people who do, it's like, on, it's, it's, I'm kind of similar to you. It's like more so on the need, you know, like folks need it, you know, like, and that's like immediate folk. Like, yeah, I can't see the world, man. It's just me. You know it's what just I mean? Me, so it's just, and then it's I, look, just me. I look at I look at 
Yeah, and I look at the situation, man. Habitual people who habitually in jams. Mm. I can't. I can't do that for you. They man. always gonna be in the jam. They all. Yeah. They always gonna so, be in the jam. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, so if somebody run into a jam or something, and I know they, you know, they about their business. They just in the jam. I help them out. But people who habitually in jams, man, I was like, hey. Yeah, you know, hey. you know what I learned, y'all. Um, a very close friend of mine at one point. This is a long, long time ago. Um, you know, he called me and he's like, "Look, I'm getting evicted." And this is a very close friend. He's like, "Look, I'm getting evicted." Like, it's somebody I consider a brother. He said, "Hey, I'm getting evicted tomorrow." Mm. Right? Tomorrow. I need twenty three hundred dollars. Now I had I had twenty three hundred. Right. And I had given it to him every time he asked before that. Sometimes I got it back. Sometimes I get I didn't. And I didn't really even care about not getting it back unless he told me I was. And that was see, that was part of the mistake. I, he always told me I get it back. Instead of just taking a gift. Right. But I remember that phone conversation we we're having that day. And I'm like, man, you know what? I ain't going to do it. And this is my brother, man. I'm like, listen, like, yeah, man, I, I can't, I can't do that for you. And it got, it, it created some tension on the relationship, right? It created some tension on that friendship. But what I ended up realizing, man, is that, look, at the end of the day, sometimes, not sometimes, let me take that back, at all times, if anybody's going to get through anything, they must feel pain. They must feel pain, right? If you always break your fall, you never have a fear of breaking your arm. And so then you move recklessly. You make reckless decisions because in your mind, I'm always going to catch my fall. Sometimes, man, you got to let somebody break an arm. You got to let them get still for a second. You got to let them get a cast. You got to let them go to, to what do they call it, um, you know, uh, training, right? Therapy, right? Where they, 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 they rehabbing, right? Working it out, figuring it out, getting better. Because that is how you progress somebody. That's how you help somebody. The hard part is in those moments, the person won't feel that. They won't, that they, they won't understand that. Right, it won't make any sense to them, especially when a relationship is close. Especially when a relationship is close, it won't make any sense. But I always knew, or I, I started to realize, rather, I didn't always know, but I started to realize, like, damn, like if I'm really going to help, I gotta force him to a spot where he got to do something. He he's got to be at a spot where he is back on the wall, right? Because this, because that's what this really comes down to. If we're gonna keep it a buck tonight, right? Like. John, I know where you come from. I know your story. You ain't have nothing, right? Straight out of Fulton, right? Back on the wall. Nobody handing you nothing. Nobody doing you no favors. Nobody patting you on the back when you get something, right? 18, they sending you out here. Go figure that shit out. That's how I go. The day after. 18 is the day. <laughs> That's how I go. Dab it. You in the streets. Making bad decisions, right? In the streets, get locked up, go to jail for a couple, not jail, prison, for a couple of years, right? You come out of there, that's, that's, you don't got options, dog. Back on the wall, figure this shit out. Make a play, do something. Most people do not realize, one simple fact, that when you are forced into a point of survival, you will figure it out. You have no choice. If I drop one of y'all, both of y'all in the middle of the woods right now, you one of y'all from the country. If I drop both y'all in the woods right now, all right, drop y'all in the middle of the woods, it's pitch black, you can't see shit. You got one or two choices. You either stand in there and that's it. You stand in there and that's it. Or you gonna move your fucking feet and go figure it out. You're gonna figure out how to feed yourself. You're gonna figure out how to bathe yourself. You're gonna find a way home at some point. Might not be tomorrow, 
could be a month from now could be a year from now but you're going to get there too many people get put against a wall and they got somebody to pull them out of that situation and we have to really start empowering and pushing each other there is no safety net here hey if you depending on me if you think you're going to be able to get something out of me that's going to give you a free pass on doing work that's not happening dog because my back has been on the wall multiple times ain't nobody come to get me not one person came to get me but me so i can't be out here trying to save everybody man i gotta focus on making sure i'm fucking saving myself right i gotta make sure i'm saving myself man so that's kind of how i got a perspective man when it comes to the friends or family man one of the other things that i wanted to talk to y'all about and, I, and i'm pull, i'm looking at this old text that we had david about this so it's like one of the other things too is especially in real estate right like there's it's options man real estate is like i don't know about y'all man back you know back when the money won't good Hey man, look, Sunday at the church, you might catch me in the corral. All right, you might catch me at the corral. All right, you might catch me at the, at the corral. Y'all, Golden Corral for y'all that don't know. All right, I don't know. No. Sunday at the church, Golden Corral. We don't do that no more, though. All right, we don't do that no more. But sometimes real estate is very much like a buffet. You walk up to the table, man, there's so many damn options, man. You don't know what to get. So, what do most people do? Overload the plate. They want it all. You want, you want everything. It's a buffet. It's one one. The price of entry is one price. Once you put real estate investor, that's your job title on Facebook. That's on your business card. That's what you tell people you do. I'm a real estate investor. Da 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 da. You know what starts to happen, man? People think they at the buffet. Now you want to do every type of creative deal now you want to own notes now you want to build houses now you want to flip houses now you want to own duplexes and triplexes and apartment complexes and i want to be an agent i want to do this you want to all this shit. buffet that's what happens man you know what happens sometimes when i used to hit the corral man dad i don't know if you ever been to go and corral or not i know oh, you yeah in all right so you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah man listen Around here, we call them a heavy plate. We call that a heavy plate, all right? Every once in a while, you hit that corral, and you get yourself a heavy plate. You stuck for a little bit. It'll sit you down. It's going to put you down, man. You you hit that plate, dog. It don't matter. You can get as much on there as you want. You down for a little bit. You down for a little bit. Now, some of us, we might bounce back in 30 minutes or something. We good to go. We back out here. Brother like me sound like y'all too i got to go home man. i got to lay it down it might be one o'clock after church man i might see y'all at five o'clock right it might not catch you again till tomorrow and my point guys is you start when you have so many options when it comes to real estate it can be extremely difficult to realize one important thing become a master an expert at one revenue stream because once you become a master at one revenue stream, you can create a level of consistency with it. When you can attach systems and processes to it, when you can attach good bookkeeping to it, now what you have is the foundation of a business that you can now bolt other things on to. A lot of times people talk to me, they hear my story and they're like, man, you've owned apartments, you've built houses, you've rented houses, wholesaled and done this and done that most people i think don't actually realize that's been over you know 13 years now, so this in September, 13 years and that has been from learning things in sets learning things one at a time sometimes two at a time but really one thing at a time because again i recognize it early i'm like man i'm 22 years old it's a marathon i don't have to have this figured out by 25 i don't have to have this figured out perfectly by 30. Let me add something on to my skill set every other year. So for for 12 months, I still work like this. For 12 months, I'm locking in on one thing. I'm ISOing out everything else. And I'm going to become 
expert level at whatever it is I'm looking at. And all I need is 12 months to do that. And I'm good. Because I'm going to I'm going to masterminds. I'm buying courses. I'm consuming as much information in that 12 months on that one thing. As I possibly can. I think a lot of people y'all get into real estate, especially. And again, they at the buffet, man. They just they just getting a little bit of everything. They trying to do a little bit of everything. Has that been an experience for either one of y'all? Is that something y'all have to struggle to deal with? Trying to do different things or trying to put your hand in a lot of different stuff. Uh, y'all talk about that, man. Has that affected either one of y'all? Yeah, I think that's probably been the biggest challenge, right? You know, for me, um, you know, I'm 41 now, right? So when I started real estate, I was 39. Uh, you know, I was on my third child, 15, you know, 14 years into marriage. And I don't feel like I have a ton of time. Yeah. Right? And I mean, and we're in the information age, right? I mean, you have videos galore. You have courses galore. Like you said, it's so much out here pulling you in this direction. You have financial literacy and credit repair and stocks and anything. You know, Turo, Airbnb. Right. And, you know, when I got into you now, you know, so I'm a hard head by nature. Right? <laughs> I don't listen. OK, hard head, make a soft ass. I ain't gonna <laughs> Facts. But one thing that I really, really listened to that you just constantly spoke to was you have to learn how to build your own vertical. Yeah. Right. Because once again, seller finance, sub to JV play is so much going on out here. And you just kept hearing it like get a solid wholesale business in place. Yeah. This is going to be your capital. And you yep. build out from there, right? You got time. But once again, I'm like, man, I'm getting old. You see all the grades. <laughs> um, and I'm like, man, I'm just running out of time. So, yeah, I ran a JV play. You know, I, I threw some racks into, you know, a creative finance course, right? I was putting money into education and putting time and, and energy into these different strategies, right? Yeah. Um, it did. Like you said, I put a lot on my plate. When I got into the one-on-one -on -one program, it had done sat me down for a little bit. And that's why I got into the one on one, because I was like, man, like I got all this food on my plate. It tastes good, but I, I can't digest it. Right. Because I ain't grew enough yet. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that was that was a big setback for me. But once I did lock in and just really get focused on building my wholesale business, once again, it was just kind of lights out. From there. No doubt. Yeah, man. And it's, it's funny because unfortunately this is one of those things we don't figure out until hindsight right you know they always say right hindsight is 2020 but I, I i i teach everybody that because i felt it myself before all right having my hand in a lot of different pots working on a lot of different things and y'all that are my students or people who follow me know this you know i almost went bankrupt in 2017 right like at the attorney's office he, you know, multi-millionaire, he looked at me dead in my face like, well, buddy, what are you going to do? I'm looking like, what is this man talking about? Like, what you mean? What I'm going to do? Are you going to file bankruptcy? What are you going to do? I'm like, hold on, dog. Now we not. So it's like when I came out of that and I'm like, hey, I'm not doing that. Not doing it. Right. One of the things I had to ask myself, I said, man, I've been having high success for seven years and I run into this. Why? What happened? Hindsight's 2020. I know that. So I said to myself at the time, I need to reflect. I need to look back and figure out, okay, where did I drop the ball? Where did I go? Wrong? One thing that I did, I've got a lot of great relationships, a lot of good friendships. So I reached out to everybody I knew who I knew or saw as highly successful, more successful, more financially stable, better family life, all those things. I reached out to those people and I wanted to sit down with them one on one and have a conversation with them. I knew I went in knowing what I wanted to ask. They thought we were just catching up, getting lunch, getting coffee. But I was on a mission to find out what did they know that I didn't know. Because we were on the same marathon. Some of them started running the race after me. Right. Some of them started running at the same time as me. And it, it looked like I was winning a race until you get to that last leg. We've all seen that video. You get to you, look, we've seen them YouTube clips. 
the finish line is right there. You start to let up off that gas a little bit. Somebody go right by you. And so when I started looking at this and having conversations with different people, there was one common denominator, man. One common denominator. They all had a part of their business that was extremely profitable and extremely consistent. All right. And they relied on that business income to support chasing out the other things they wanted to eat. So they weren't at going to crowd. They weren't at the buffet. They was doing it different. They ordered a la carte. They one thing at a time. And I realized that that was why I messed up. That was a slip up that I had. I, I started with no money, just like both of y'all. And so naturally, man, I'm just chasing any and everything. Somebody tell me I can make some money on. If if somebody came to me and they like, yo, I got this property over here. It could it could be thirty minutes away. Hey, man, you can give it to I'll buy it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then and then you start to realize again. I'm I'm reflecting back. I'm talking to people. I'm like, damn, everybody I'm talking to has a consistent part of the business, whether it's a rental portfolio, whether it's a high paying job from somewhere else, whether they got a wholesale business consistently doing, you know, 10, 15 deals. A month. Like they all had something where then I realized in that moment, whoa, 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 like I'm chasing out all these different things. And so that's when I really went back deep into wholesaling, right? And focused hardcore on wholesaling. Uh, and doing hotel deals. So, John, what about you, right? Like, um, you, you're you at the buffet, right? Like, how are you managing through that? Are you trying to do a bunch of different things? Are you honing in on one thing? Where are you kind of at with that? I don't think I necessarily tried to do different things. So I think yeah. when we got in, the big thing was like short sales, up to and stuff like that. Way um, back. So yeah. once that kind of cleared up, I just primarily, yeah, just focus on like wholesaling, and that and that pretty much been the focus. Now, as far as the marketing, I've been like that because I have bandit signs, I have business cards that look like bandit signs. Like I'm online, I'm on Craigslist, posting ads, and what's like I've I've done it like that, like chasing yeah. different, like basically chasing all these different, trying to get a deal in all these different ways, versus just you know focusing on one of them and building vertically so once i started like cold calling and focusing on that i've actually been slow to do anything else i just i just started texting maybe a month ago you know since Got the it. first time i put paper in there and the same Got thing it. with the va i kind of like took after that i'm like you know i just took my time kind of build vertically um, so how how has that been working for you then so so if i'm hearing you right you kind of learn from your mistakes early on and kind of going crazy and, and doing all these different things you've now reversed course right and you're doing the things a bit slower how is that showing up for you in your business well it's still you know business is business so we're still you know the roller coaster but it's it's uh i would say it's it's been way more lucrative you know it's been more successful it's been more streamlined so to speak it's not predictable i'm not going to say that but it's been instead of me you know I, I know for sure if I get on the phones, I'm, I'm gonna get on the phones with some sellers. If I do this all week or a week or two, I'm I'm, I'm gonna catch some. It's you, it's you not like you know, you know, say it again. I said you go, you you gonna be on the phone. You're gonna get something on the line. Like you're gonna cook up something. Yeah, yeah. It's not like um you know like it was before. Like let me send a bunch of postcards and maybe get some. Let me put these signs out and maybe get something. Let me. So I just kind of like focus on what works and what I know works and just stay with that. Um, now, what now, now get on the marketing side, like, you know, heard about diff hearing about different marketers. I can't have made the mistake again. Like I was saying, I did it again, made the mistake again. Like I got a VA and then I jumped into a bunch of markets all at once. I jumped into like four or five different markets all at once, you know, so that I, I kind of, you know, I'm still a little bit hard headed because I'm thinking, I'm you know, working for you. yeah, yeah, you know, once I get this, I can go and take off, you know, but it didn't quite pay out like that. But you know, still, still, still kind of learning, still kind of learning with it, but no doubt. And I mean, and, and we, we all, we're all always students, right? And I think that's right. another really, John, you're making a great point, really. 
because I think people have the conception that as you start doing things right, especially foundationally, right? You're, you're running profit first. You're doing some of these things. That doesn't mean that you're not going to run into more roadblocks, more speed bumps. You know, right. those, those never end. Right. I'm dealing, I'm dealing with roadblocks. I'm dealing with speed bumps. Like that, that doesn't go anywhere. I know there was a point in my life in business where I felt like there's some point, there's some peg on the ladder, ladder that I'll get to, some rung on the ladder I'll get to where all this extra shit will stop. And it, and it doesn't. It doesn't. It's just Biggie told us. And look, Biggie already told us. Man, he said more money, more problems. Right. So we already know this. All right. We already know this. All right. And so I'm starting making decisions and I'm starting to run into these moments. But here's the point. Now, when I run into these things, I have systems and processes and strategy to fall back on. I have planning to fall back on. So one of the things I've talked about a lot recently, is like even in my business, I've developed what I call a buy box. A lot of you guys that sell deals to hedge funds and stuff like that. You guys are familiar with that word. And even for myself, I realized a couple of years ago, I'm like, I got to define my own buy box. I, I can't buy everything like I've been doing. So what are the type of deals that I'm looking for? Regardless if somebody, if David calls me today and says, oh, I got this deal and all right, well, it don't, fit, it don't fit my buy box. I'm not saying it's not a good deal, but I got a way I'm going about doing business and I'm relying and trusting that, right? So um, I want if you guys got some questions, uh, drop them in the comments for me. I want to keep this going. Y'all got some time? I'm kind of chilling. Y'all got some time? Definitely. All right. Yeah. So if, if y'all got some questions, throw them in the chat. I'll get these guys to answer it. I want to kind of just run back through this real quick. Um. You know, and, and, and I just want to kind of consolidate this so everybody kind of understands, right? So, you know, look, stop helping friends and family, right? I know that's not the perfect answer. I know that's, you know, sounds easier than it actually is, but there's power in the word no. Um, you can't help everybody, um, but how you can help somebody for sure is go fish beside them. Offer them a spot. You know, point them in the right direction. Show them where the information is at. Tell them a book to go read. Tell them to look at a piece of information. Tell them how they can help you with something that you've got going on. For me personally, man, like once I can see that somebody's willing to push, somebody's willing to go, somebody's willing to give it something, they're not asking me when they're going to get paid. They're not asking me how much they can make. They're not asking me that type of stuff. They just ask me how they can hit go. You know, people who know my story, man, I worked for somebody for over a year for free, a real estate investor for free when I was first getting started. Never asked him for any money, by the way. Now, I, I didn't ask him for money once. The only thing I ever asked him is what did he need me to do? Because I realized at a very young age, whatever he told me to do, I could ask questions on how to do it. And if I had space to ask questions on how to do it, I could figure it out eventually, right? So think about how you're managing friends and family. A, a really big one, right? Uh, business money is not personal money, all right? This is a huge misconception in business, all right? The money that your company is making does not mean that's how much money the individual is making, all right? John, I see John over there laughing because he know. He know exactly what I'm talking about. Right. I've been in these situations where people are like, oh, I saw you made a hundred thousand dollars. I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa, stop. Okay. I didn't make nothing. All right. All right. RP. All right. The LLC made a hundred. I just sweep the floors around here, bro. I ain't, I ain't catching nothing on that. All right. I sweep floors. That's what I do. I'm the janitor. I'm the head janitor over here. All right. That's how that works. All right. Business money is not your personal money, all right? I pay myself in all seriousness 30%. Uh, I don't know if you guys have a set percentage of what you guys pay yourself. Do you guys have a set percentage? Say that again. 25. 25%. 25%. Thabit, I don't know if you have a percentage or not. but No. Yeah, so so Thabit, that's one of the things you got to do, right, is develop, hey, what is the percentage I'm going to pay myself? I will say, man, this is where this gets really hard. 
this really gets hard because again we're still fighting that feeling that we've got ten thousand in our hand so it's tempting right hey hey john now i pay myself 25 but you know that's not a whole lot so that i mean it's still right there if i need it you know what i mean and that is tempting and that's why it's other accounts set up so i can fall back i'd be like hell no i ain't gonna touch that one out i get this one because it's still you know i'm still learning how to do it you know what i'm saying and, and those numbers go adjust so i'm still like figuring out the right numbers for me that make sense for me to grow no doubt that makes sense no doubt um all right so another thing i said like i said pay yourself 30 percent. it could be 25 percent. it could be 40 percent. you figure out your own percentages i'm not here to tell you what you should or shouldn't pay yourself my number is 30 percent. the reason my number is 30 percent is i always want to be in a position where my business has money to invest in opportunities you know one of the things that i hated and i really hate it when this would happen to me is opportunities would come up and because i hadn't saved the money properly i couldn't take advantage of the opportunity all right and great opportunities by the way i'm talking about really really great opportunities would come up and i just wasn't in a capacity where i could take advantage because i wasn't allocating my money correctly and in reality if i had done that i'd have way more so make sure you figure out some balance and how you want to pay yourself Another thing uh, that you guys have talked about tonight, and we've all really struggled with, all right, is, you know, it's very easy when you have a $60,000 a month or you have a $40,000 deal hit. It's really easy to just say to yourself, oh, I'll just increase my spending. I'll just spend more money on the business. There's no plan. There's no strategy. There's no concept to what you're doing. It's just, oh, I'll go hire VAs right oh i'll go buy a crap ton of data oh i'll go pay this coach or i'll go pay this person i'll go and so what starts to happen is you're only as good as your plan all right i look at business people think i'm crazy when i say this all right i personally i feel like business is war literally all right and so for me personally when you go to war, I'm a general. I'm a general. If you're a general, you got somebody got to have a battle plan. Nobody's just going to war. Nobody's just Russia's not attacking Ukraine or vice versa. There's not no plan involved. There could be 10 years of planning in that. Five years. Of, you guys, you got to have plans around concepts. You got to have plans around what you're doing in your business. Develop some plans and then you spend money on your plan. So when you make 40,000, when you have a $60,000 a month, you're, you already know what you want to do already. You were just waiting on the money. You were just waiting on the revenue opportunity to come in. But now once it's happened, you know exactly where that money needs to go, where it needs to be allocated, all right? So don't rush to spend, rush to establish your systems and processes in your business. Uh, a big one that we talked about, right? Develop one or two key revenue drivers in your business, right? So for me right now, that's wholesaling and wholesaling. Those are the two things for me. We're going to eat, all right? We're going to do anything. We're going to eat, all right? But you got to have something that you're chasing down. You got to have a business that, you have isolated it down to some very core revenue strategies. And it, mine is wholesaling and wholesaling. It doesn't have to be yours, right? It could be wholesaling and rentals. It could be whatever you want it to be. But when you try to go get past two and you're not an expert in either one of those yet, neither one of those can make money without you physically there yet, you're not ready to add to that just because you got money just because you think you are you're not ready to add to that all right you need to be focused on again becoming an expert and how can you exit yourself out of that business to then go learn another one or two strategies 
Now another 12 months has, go, has gone by. Now you're uh, now you got four things you're good at. Now you got four things you're good at. All right. Um, other thing, when you start to have some success in business, and it's kind of the same, but don't chase out any and everything. Right? Don't chase out any and everything. I, you know, I talk about this to my students, but I look at money and and just really in just two ways. I look at um, active income and I look at passive income. Those are the only two income categories that exist to me. Passive income and active income. I focus a lot on active income because the type of passive income I want. Right. I don't want to make ten thousand dollars a month. I like nice shit. All right? I can't I can't just make ten thousand a month. Just what it is. All right. Some people can, and that's perfectly fine. All right. John, you know me, man. You know my vibe, man. I, you know, come on, bro. I, I exquisite taste, man. This is how I get down. You know what I'm saying? I like nice things. All right. I was tripping up face you, baby, when you said that though. Like, I don't want to make ten thousand a month. Like, yeah, no, listen. John, <laughs> listen, I'm gonna tell you this, man. I can't say his name. He could be watching this, by the way. He could really be watching this. Shout out if you are. I can't say his name. We're having a cigar. You know this person. And we're talking. He's like, hey, Chris, you know, like, uh, you know, this is when COVID first hit. Okay. It was like on the news, but it hadn't, they hadn't shut everything down yet. But it's starting to get a little scary, though. It's starting to look like, man, I don't know if people are going to pay rent on April 1st or not. Okay. And so we're having a conversation. He's like, Chris, well, how much money do you need? And I, I felt attacked. I'm like, hold up, bro. I'm like, what you mean how much I need? I said, well, how much money you need? Because I he got more than me. You get what I'm saying? I'm like, hold up. How much money you need? He looked me dead in my face. He said, I just need 10000 a month. I said, I said, what? Ten, I said, you're telling me you only need $10,000 a month. My point, though, is whatever your number is, whether it's 10,000, 100, whatever it is, it's OK. But figure out what that number is and then work based on those numbers. OK, work based on those numbers. All right. Let me see what these other items were. My bad. Uh, yeah, and that's really it, man. Like if you do these things. You won't run into issues in business, right? You'll be able to maintain through hard times. You'll be able to maintain through economic downturns. Because you'll have a plan, you'll have system and processes to rely on where you'll be in a position where you can really, really push forward. Uh, I saw a question and y'all hit the like button for me on this. All right. If y'all want me to start doing more YouTubes and smart, get back online and doing some of this public content because I. Y'all know me, man. If you you fam, you know how I rock. You already know how I rock. I kick it with my students, man. People paying me money to learn, get educated, make money. I'm, I kick it with y'all because I, I love y'all. Y'all know that. But I might, maybe, y'all hit the like button, man. Maybe I'll get back out here publicly, start doing more videos, more content, you know, that type of thing. Uh, John and Thabit, I saw a question earlier. Uh, what markets are you guys currently in? Yeah, I'm, I'm primarily in North Carolina, so Raleigh Metro, Charlotte Metro, Triad. Um, I'm in Florida as well, Ohio. Uh, so those are really kind of my three key markets now. Dope, dope. John, what about you? What markets are you in, bro? John, and I don't tell me six. Nah, nah, I'm, I'm running exclusive. Ah, shit, I got my ass whipped. I came back home. I'm running exclusively. <laughs> Out the 804 right now, man. So, I mean, I, 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 I am in like six counties or cities per se, but it's all right here sure. in the area. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm in, I'm in Portsmouth too. I'm in Portsmouth. I'm marketing to Portsmouth, Newport News. Hold up, bro. Whoa, 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 not going to make any money. Don't listen to John. All right. Stay out of there. Okay. <laughs> stay out of there. All right. Stay out of there. All right. Does your I'm buy box. No, nah, I'm just messing with you, man. It's a terrible place. Yeah. To business. Does your buy box change? All right. Depending on your investment strategy, wholesale and rental flip, 
shout out to my dog joe all right out of 757 um yes it does right so for me personally i do all of these things so for me a deal first comes in and it we have multiple buy boxes and the deal will dictate which buy box it goes into so when the deal gets analyzed based on what the numbers say that will tell me is it a wholesale deal is it a hotel opportunity is it a seller finance opportunity or is it a fix and flip rental whatever based on that that will drive my decision making on what i do with the deal now where this becomes really difficult by the way is when the buy box tells you to seller finance it hold long term right or create a note out of it or to create a rental or fix and flip really rental and seller finance it's always going to be less revenue than what you would make wholesaling it or fix and flipping and so this is what i mean by really being reliant and dependent on your systems and processes because that is hard for me sometimes when i could sell something and make 20 30 40 thousand dollars but i've got to make a decision to keep it and make 400 dollars a month right that was a mistake that i made early on i always went for the 20 30 40 grand I never went for the $400 a month ever. John, you feel me? I ain't never take, listen, somebody, <laughs> John, you feel me, man? <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to learn the same lesson, man. It's, shit, I ate, man. You know? it's rough, man. It's, listen, somebody put a pot of money in front of me with that purple band around it. And they say, hey, are you, I'm like, I need that. Like that, that, it look a lot better than four $100 bills. All right. But, it's different when the $400 bills come every day or every month rather for your life. All right. When assets start to appreciate and different things start to happen. All right. So we got to make uh, some of those adjustments, man. John, I'm glad to hear that you've, you, you looked at what happened when you shot into some different markets. You said to yourself, Hey, I'm going back home. All right. I'm back in the 804. I'm focusing back on where this thing started at, where I had success at. That's smart. I, I I like that. Where I'm making some money. Because it's making, I'm jumping into yeah. new markets. It's a learning curve. Like I hired a VA and I jumped in some new markets. So I have two learning curves. So talk about, talk about the learning curve real quick, man. When you jump into a different market, what does that kind of look like? What, what did you kind of run into in doing that? So, I mean, the first thing, like, should have just pulled absentee. This That's my mentality. Okay, I'm just going to pull absentee. And I'm gonna make some owner occupied in there. I'm gonna hit these zip codes, you know what I'm saying? Because these zip codes look like they're the hottest. And that right. probably was the end of my market research. Like, you know what I'm saying? And that's, you know, so I ended up buying data in these areas, you know, a little bit of data here, a little bit of data there, but really not getting no traction because I just I just don't didn't know enough about the area. Um right. didn't have any connections in the area as far as attorney, so I had to lean on members of the U though for that. So that's not really a problem on that as far as like logistics, like getting stuff moving, but just, you know, not knowing enough about the area, what, you know, what goes on over here. Is this rental area? Is this a fix and flip area? Yeah. What's the price points over here? What's the price points over there? So I got a list that's kind of all over the place. And, you know, here in Richmond, like the median, the median home price, you know, I mean, it's getting up there now, but yeah. it ain't like Atlanta shit. It ain't, you know what I'm saying? So right. looking at, even looking at the it's different values so where i'm used to looking at you know houses under a hundred thousand or deals under a hundred thousand you know maybe 150 or you know under 200 basically now you know looking at deals two three some four hundred thousand and trying to make sense out of them is it a deal or not it's just it was like that fuck i'm going home because you know, it's you know it's, it's too much all at once no doubt no 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 respect so, I, I get it yeah. no, that makes perfect sense <laughs> Yeah, so I got I got a question for you. Um, so you, know, you you both learned from here, right? You guys have realized like yeah, it was kind of true. Sixty thousand dollar month, you know what I mean? Forty thousand dollar check went a little crazy. All right, went a little crazy. All right, where are you guys at now? Like, where are you guys at in terms of not the money? But the mental, right? Where are you guys at right now in terms of the mental 
how you're approaching business now. Because everybody hasn't gone through this yet, right? Like some people are going to watch this entire conversation and they end up going through the same thing, right? How are you recovering from it or recovered from it? How are you really kind of, you know, really pushing forward and giving yourself some grace, right? Like giving yourself some grace to mess up. You know, I think a lot of times, man, we could be really hard on ourselves, especially when it comes to money. You know, we can beat ourselves up and get frustrated and those types of things. But I've learned, man, we got to start giving ourselves some grace uh, because we got the knowledge, right? Like we, we've accomplished it before, even if we fucked it off, like we've accomplished. It. So it, we can run it back. I'm a testament to that. I'm a, I'm a true testament to that. Like I, I literally was millions and millions of dollars in debt in 2017 and made it back in a year. Right. Like so it can be done. Right. You can rely on those knowledges. How are y'all pressing forward now? What kind of energy are y'all on right now as y'all really push forward in your businesses and things like that? Yes, it's definitely with the energy of, of gratitude, you know, first and foremost. Right. Um, but it's also, you know, with the energy of acceptance and, and, and refocus. Right. Um, you know, as I was kind of going through that process and, and knew, like I literally dropped the bag. Right. And yeah. I, I dropped it. I fumbled it. Right. I fumbled the bag because I, I, I initially thought I dropped it and I was kind of feeling it. Right. I was I was down on myself a little bit like, bro, you really just fumbled 100 racks. You really just dropped 100 racks. Right. Yeah. And and but all I could hear in the back of my mind. Right. Was you, you know, always telling us your story. Like, bro, I went broke twice. Right. I went broke twice. And all I could think about was like. That's, that's possibly not the end. So I sent you that text. Yeah. I was like, coach, like, man, like, you have a fun with the bag. And you gave me some perspective because I was really down on myself, like, for real. Yeah, but re read what I wrote you back when you asked me that. Yeah, you said, you said, I read it, I read it. But I want you to read what you sent me. And then I want you to read what I said back to you. And then, I, and also when you sent it, if you don't mind. How was you feeling? Like what mode, or like what zone was you feeling or in when, when you sent me that? No, I was down, man. I was like, yo, you really dropped a hundred racks. Like you put in all this work to get here. You ain't never seen this type of bread and you really dropped it. And it's, it would be different if I had something to show for it. Like if I, if you looked on my IG and you see me in Honolulu. Right, you know, right, right. With the ice, you know. The, the bedazzles and all have you seen hey that's one thing right but when right. i'm still i feel like i'm still in the same place that want a good feeling right but i but i you know we fighters and i hit you up and i was like your coach you know you ever fumble the bag and you was like can't ever play the game without turnovers fumble yeah lost the game nah like, no. that's a fact like we ain't losing that don't, like, that, don't, that don't happen. So like, I, I, like, I, like, I felt like I was right back at rock bottom again. And when he was like, lost the game, nah, I was like, yeah, we not losing. It yeah. ain't over. Yeah. Right? And that's really the biggest thing that I got from that. Like, it don't matter where you at. Because there's a bunch of people that ain't even got in the game yet. They still hoping to get a check one day. They even stop fighting. They not even in the game. They just right. looking at you getting the checks. And then you got people that got in the game. They took a setback and now they back on the sidelines again. Right? right. And then you got people like me, once again, like I'm embarrassed by it a little bit, but you know what? Like I gave it all I got. I got to a certain point. You know what I'm saying? I got to a certain point and I wouldn't have seen otherwise. And I and now I'm back where you at. But the perspective is it don't matter where we at, the game is still open. Like we still can get in the game, we can still play, we can still run these strategies, right? And that's yeah. it. Like, don't give up. Like, that's what you, when you told me that, and I, I'm going to be honest, like, like a tear almost dropped. Because I was like, bro, like, you up. give up. Keep pushing forward. And obviously, you know, I post a couple, you know, checks. You know, the check's still dropping. We're still putting deals on the board. It ain't over. It's, it's We're in this business to help people. And there's a million people out there that need our help. And they're going to need it more than ever now. That's all you've been talking about these last couple weeks. Word up. It ain't changing. But we still got to play, which is helping people, right? They're going to need it in some type of shape, form, or fashion. So, yeah, we're running it up. 100%, man. And you already know, man, if you're in the U, 
you're getting all the plays man you're getting all the plays to work through the recession man david i i love what you just said though right because so when you sent me the text all right so when i saw it it was a trigger for me be honest it was a trigger for me because it's only been five years for me since i felt that you understand right you gotta think right like i started in 08 had massive success tons of money 2017 took a big hit right humbling humbling hit humbling hit right and it was a trigger for me when you texted me that and i wanted to respond to you with the first thing that i came like first thing that came to my mind when i read it right because when i read it man i just flashed back to that moment in time and i remembered the pain from it and it was it was extremely painful extremely painful because and it's you know why it's so painful i'm sure it's painful for you you know why it's painful because i felt like i let a lot of people down i felt like a lot of people was riding on me a lot of people was betting on me a lot of people needed me and i let all of them down and that that was that affected me and it does still to be clear it still does right like that feeling is still that's why it was a trigger because flashing back to that moment where you feel helpless. You feel like don't nobody got your back. You feel like ain't nobody there to help. Because that's when you start reflecting. You start thinking back. I'm like, man, what about all these people I did all this stuff for? When everybody needed me, when everybody needed something, I always stood tall. I was always there. Now I'm in a spot. Who going to help me? None of these people I've been giving money to and giving loans to and friends and family and none of these people can help me because they all depended on me. So now I'm out here on the island. I'm stuck. And and it it what it does, like I that analogy I, you said earlier, just in the middle of the woods, figuring this shit out. And it becomes very simple then. It's like, hey. I'm in the middle of the woods. I don't know where the fuck I'm at. Somebody blindfolded me and dropped me off out here. All right, I can sit here. I can I can cry to myself. Woe is me. I can think about what I should have done. and man, Or I can figure out a plan. I got to put a battle plan together. It ain't over. Like, I'm not... I still got my wits. I got my arms, my legs... I'm mobile. Yeah, I can, I can, I can, I, I can, I can activate. I, I can get back active again. See, the hard part, man, like for me at that point in time was I had pushed so hard just to get there. I gave that, I to get there, dog, I had given it everything in me. Everything. Having a child early, dropping and failing out of college. Dealing with friends and family looking at me like a failure. That was all on my spirit in that moment. That's that's a defeating place for a man to be. For anyone, but for a man to be there, that's tough. And it became very simple in that moment for me. I said, hey, this was just a battle. Yo, snap out of it. This was just a fucking battle. And that's okay. That's okay. Got my ass kicked on this one. And that's fine, but I ain't dead yet. So let me go regroup. Let me go rally the troops. Let me go talk to the people on my side, the people who rocking with me and supporting me and believing in me. Let me tap in with them. Let me, let me, let me, let me get some energy off of them. Cause I'm messed up right now. Let me let me tap in. Let me get some energy off of them. That's one thing we don't do enough. We don't tap in with other people around us. A lot of people would have never sent that text to me. If that been sent. And can I speak Go. on that for a second? Go, please. Because I think that's what's really holding a lot of people back, right? You know, people just, they don't understand how to be humble, right? And it's for a lot of different reasons. But 
I think being in the U, you just understand how important it is to always be a student. I mean, you spoke to it earlier, right? So it's like, you know, when you was going through what you was going through, you know, you may have looked around and said, well, damn, like, who can I turn to? Like, who, like, they depended on me. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to turn to them. You know what I mean? But, you know, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm thankful that, you know, I have the you that you was really a text away. Like, I'm really like, like I'm thinking it's over. Like, it's over, man. I'm about to go back to work, man. It's over, man. It's, it's a wrap. We done. Right. And I shoot that text because that's the power of relationships. That's the power of me understanding. No matter how big I think I done got, what I done did, like, I'm still a student. Yeah. And I can go. I got somebody I could go through that's been there. Like really went through these battles, really overcame these battles. And I can say, oh, you fumbled. Knowing you done told this story a million times, but it's never been practical for me because I hadn't gone through that in my mm, business. Yet. That's deep. You ain't like, had, you, had, you, had, you couldn't had, feel it when I said it because you ain't felt it yet. I ain't felt it yet. So I could reach out, I could reach out to CJ. I could reach out to a Keith and I could reach out to a John. You know, and I and I talked to my brother about it. I had my wife that I could go through and say, Man, this is what things is looking like. Yeah, and everybody said the same thing. Like it ain't over. You know what I'm saying? Like you, we know what you built up. Like this ain't it ain't over with. Like you just said, it's just it's it's a battle, right? The war ain't over. We gonna live to fight another day. Hey, I'm I'm gonna drop this for you real quick. All right, I'm gonna drop this on the screen for you real quick. All right, because 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 this is really what it come down to. This is really what it come down to when you out there by yourself. You don't got nobody standing beside you, and 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 I and I and you do at home, right? Shout out to the wife. You, but when the biz, because as as men, man, we so prideful in providing, right? So prideful in being able to provide and do these different things, and so what I had to find is the same thing you're finding. As I'm like, oh, I see what's happening, and I, and I'm 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 receiving it. I'm ready for it. God, send it to me. You need me to fight. You need me to show you I can fight. You need me to show you I got that in me. Okay. I'm on assignment, dog. I can run it. I'm on assignment. Ain't nobody, ain't nothing stopping me. Ain't nothing slowing me down. Once I accepted that, once I humbled myself, once I stripped out my pride, once I could talk about it. That's that was one thing, man. Just talking about, it. just getting it off. Just hey, this is what I got going on. This is what I'm dealing with right now. This is where I'm at. It's humbling, man, because that might not be the perception people had of me at that time. Everybody didn't know what I was dealing with. Right? And so for me, man, and I and I see it in both of y'all, it's getting to that fight point. Right? It's getting to that fight point. It's like, oh, this was just a battle. This won't the whole war. It ain't all about checks. It ain't all about checks. And about a contract. Facts, man. And you start getting to this point, bro, where you like, okay, let me re-strategize. Let me take a look at my team. Let me, let me, because because the thing about being at war, going to battle, is when you get an opportunity to reflect, you remember in the heat of battle who was standing beside you and who was not. Yo, who was out there with me on the front line really getting it in? Like, who was really pushing? That's Those are the people you you start tapping in with them. You start having conversations with them. That's when you start getting re-energized. That's when you get refocused. Because, to be honest, I'm going to be all the way real. See, in my position, I got to see people fold every day. That's hard. I got to see people fold every day. Every day is somebody stop believing in themselves. Every day is somebody that's in that same spot. Don't send a text. Just fold it up. Y'all know how many people I talk to, man, as wholesalers or business people that, oh, man, I did a deal. And then, I don't know, man, the next month I ain't get one. So I just fell off and stopped. Oh, uh, yeah, nah, I don't know what happened, man. I lost 20000 on this one thing and I just couldn't. So it's like, hold up. So it's like, so you took one hit and gave in? Not me, bro. 
they got to get me all the way out of here to stop it. It's on. It's in God's hands. It's on him. And once you can accept and realize that, that's when you. That's when something changed. That's when the the level starts to to go up. Because that's for me, man. That's where I realized. I said, "Oh, I'm on assignment. I'm being tested greatly." And I and I can either work through this, no matter how ugly it get, how tough it becomes, how many bill collectors on my phone, how many it don't matter. Pushing through it, working through it, and before I even realized that I had, won't easy. Took took had years of effects from it, physically, mentally, business wise, emotionally, all these things. But there's no greater feeling than being able to reflect on beating that bat, like but winning that war. So my encouragement to everybody, man, is as you encounter these things, as you deal with stuff like this in life, shit hits you, things shake left, mess up the bag, you fumble the bag, whatever. Run the play again, man. Get back active. Push through it. Make it work, right? Like, again, Thabit, you said this. In this conversation, you said this. You said I got this is exactly what you said. You said I got twenty one hundred dollars. I had proof of concept. That's all you need. You don't need nothing else. That's all you need. So you already know you can go run it back, right? We all know that. John, what about you, man? I'm gonna jump over to you for a second. What What about you? Before we get out of here, bro, like where are you at now? What kind of what phase are you in? How are you pushing yourself? at this moment to work through some of these mistakes as you like you said you've made them a few times right how are you really challenging and pushing yourself and i want you also john if you don't mind man and i don't think you do this enough to be clear talk about the consistency and the strength it took and is continuing on you to take to be as consistent as you have been because i know you personally but i can think of multiple instances where most people would have quit this business for sure what what has that been like for you well, i mean the consistency man is i'm not the most consistent all the time but that was the thing that kind of bumped me up through the levels like every time i got consistent and focused you know that's when i started seeing growth that's when i started seeing significant progress um consistently over the years is i just i don't have anything else you know it's not like i got into this business on this you know let me see if i can do it when i got in the business it was this business got to replace the income that i'm making now i got to get it to the point that it's replacing the income that i'm making now and then i'm on my own time on my own time and i made it so now we got to that point so now i'm looking at like just reverse engineering, like how much, how much money do I need a month, you know, to, to be comfortable. And yeah. that's kind of, I'm looking at it now. So, you know, it's kind of lofty, but that's good, you know? Um, and I got, I got the profit first model in effect and I'm still just, just basically, man, just in a nutshell, just, just trying. I ain't, I ain't even going to say I'm giving it a hundred percent effort. I, I think I can do more, but just, the, it's, it's like the free throw and the layup would be. I know as long as we constantly, consistently talking to sellers, making offers, we gonna have some business. We gonna have some meat on the table at the end of the, at the end of the day. So I mean, that's that's just what it is for me. Um, as far as where I'm at now, like like I just said, man, um, I'm, I'm in growth phase. I'm realizing, yeah. you know, it's it's a it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You know, e even if I wanna, you know, jump up and grow the business times 10, like right away. I know a lot of people talk, you know, 10X. And <laughs> yeah, and, right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, even if I do want to jump up and grow the business like that, then, you know, for me, that's just not realistic. Um, right. It's, I got to go through the paces first to get to get going. And then, you know, once I kind of figure out what's going on, then I can kind of, kind of start putting things in place where they need to be. And I'm just right there at that kind of at the beginning, man. You know, I hired a, a VA last year, every nine months into it, and I'm just – Putting, figuring out where stuff goes and kind of putting it in the place where it needs to be. Um, and I, I still got a lot of work to do, but you know that's that's just where I'm at now. I'm confident um, in my skill set that I could I'll always be able to eat. 
home and I, I won't have to rely on nobody else to eat. But, you know, and that's, you know, that's just where it is. If, if I make, and I'm going to be honest, man, if I make a hundred grand a year, if I make 500 grand a year, I'm going to be content with it because I know yeah. it's, it's, it's better than what I was coming from. You mm. know what I mean? And, yeah. That, you know, that, that, when, when you think like that, man, I, that's a bar. That's a bar. It's, it's very easy. You know, once you start making money, things rolling very well, it becomes very easy to forget. Yeah. You know, it becomes extremely easy to forget that spot you was at. And sometimes it takes a text like Thabbis to be like, hey, hey. Right so that is, yeah. I appreciate you, right? I appreciate I appreciate you sending me that because, like I said, for me it was a it was a moment of damn. It was first I'm like, man, like let me see what he got going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me let me highlight him because I care about you. You know that. And, and after that, I after we finished that text conversation, I then had to spend some time in reflection, right? Hey, what do I need to tighten up right now? Hey, what am I lacking on right now? Right? Let me review my systems, my processes, my strategies. Let me take evaluation of my consistency. Right? And so I encourage all of y'all, man, if you have something that maybe is a tough combo, makes you vulnerable or hits your ego pride, whatever, man, send that message, man. Ask that advice. Lend that advice. Right? Like, you know, the, and I don't know if everybody knows, right? Like the reason I do these videos and these conversations with my students and, and stuff like that is because I know nobody else is going to give y'all a platform. Nobody else going to say, hey, Thabit, John, I want y'all to jump on a podcast with me. I got an audience. I'm doing it because these stories and conversations are important. They're more important than you. They're much more important than me. And if you're one of my students, y'all should be blowing me up to share your story, good or bad. Because that's the reality of it. This conversation tonight formulated from a place of, you know, conversation around. Because, like, hey, like, I, I'm trying to figure this out. I'm trying. Like, the, this is important. This is how we change lives. This is how we change our community. Stripping away your ego, stripping away your pride. Y'all really think it was easy for me in 2019 to start doing content and talk about what happened to me in 2017? I still ain't even been able to tell the whole story. That's how real it was. John, you know, that's how real it was. Dabby, you know too. It's like, it's like he was in the mob or something. You got to wait till that 10 year. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna, yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna hit, we're gonna hit on the 10 year Annie. You know, the pain. You the pain. Yeah, man. And that's what, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, imagine had I not been willing to share my story. Imagine I had not been willing to get on a microphone and on a camera and talk about my experiences. These thousands of people that have learned from me and been students would never exist. And truth be told, and I say this humbly and respectfully, a large portion of you guys, because y'all have told me, have been in other programs and haven't found success, haven't gotten the information that you needed. Because somebody teaching you how to fish that ain't fishing. I've been out here fishing for 13 years, catching fish sometimes, not catching them some others. I'm still casting this motherfucker though. And so sometimes you got to realize this shit ain't about you. It don't got nothing to do with you. It's about what will happen when somebody else has the opportunity to hear from you. It's about the life that you could speak into somebody else. So a lot of y'all, man, it's got this hesitation of talking about your problems, talking about your success in business, what's working, coming and sharing 
not just on a video like this, but just anywhere. Because that's, that's what we do, unfortunately, especially in our community. That's what we do. I, I, I got a lot of different groups of friends, but in, in, in us, that's what we do. We go get something, figure something out, catch a lick and run off. We don't want to tell nobody nothing. We don't want to explain nothing. We don't, we don't want to do none of that. We don't want to do none of that. Now we over here at our nice little house we got now. We got a new little car or something. You looking at everybody else. Why can't they figure it out? It could be as simple as you just talking about your experience. Don't matter if you made $2,100 or made $40,000. It's proof of concept. And sometimes that's just all somebody needs is to be able to hear from somebody that looks and sounds just like them. If y'all don't mind, before we get out of here, can y'all speak on that a little bit? Because this isn't a simple conversation, right? Like this is a vulnerable conversation, obviously, right? You got to talk about your finance a little bit, your business a little bit. What is that like for y'all to have that sense of motivation where you're willing to step out and, and talk about some of these things and share your stories? I've done content with both of you guys before talk about that if y'all don't mind a little bit man because i think that's really important no i mean it was because of people like john right i mean i think john was one of the first interviews you did that yeah. really exposed me to the youth exposed me to wholesaling and just really hearing his story you know had it not been for him you know being brave enough being vulnerable enough to just get up and say hey this is what i've been going through because i know that's not easy john been doing this since the, like you said the last recession facts, yeah. facts. so you know i'm sure that's things that he kind of thinks about in his path that he's made feels good about may not feel so good about right for him yep. speaking to that journey and how it got him to where he was let me know like this is somebody that i can relate to we from you know some of the similar areas similar situations family men right and here he is stepping out taking action providing for his family so him just speaking his story, let me know that it was possible, right? And I think, you know, once again, like you said, you giving us this platform to say, because look, I'm a GED grad, all yeah. right? I've been on drugs. I done did all that shit. I done fucked up more than anybody you can think about, right? So if I can do it, I don't got no college education. I worked at McDonald's for 12 years, right? If I could do it and do it dumb, if you got this big college education, you come from this, this great background, and you even think that you can do it, you most definitely can. You can fall surpass me and what I've already done. And I haven't done nothing. I literally went out here and fucked up a hundred racks. Right. right. So if I can fuck it up, you can get 10 times that. Thanks. Right. And that's what, once again, you know, I'm just thankful for the opportunity to not only get this play to be a part of this community, but once again, all this, you know, I just messed up this money. Yeah. But once again, I got the play to go out and get it again. And you, Putting this out there lets other people know I might not even got it yet, but I can get it. You know, that's this is the starting point. Well, honey, man, I love that, man. John, what about you, brother? Um, running back, man. I got caught up on that real yeah, quick. Right? Hey, man, that's all right. You know, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah. My 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 question, real quick, is I think a lot of people hesitate in telling their story. A lot of people hesitate and sharing and it's kind of it's always strange to me people hesitate in sharing the good but then they also hesitate in sharing the bad and and people get into these zones where they then don't share anything at all and 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 that's that's just such a terrible thing to me because in reality when you do that you're just taken you're not doing anything other than going around in life just taken yeah. And and what happens when you just take, we all want to give something, I think, right? We all want to leave something. We all want to give something. You know, Thabit talking about being a felon, going to prison, dealing with different things, working in fast food. That's, that's hitting a lot of people's life. That's touching a lot of different people. There's people in those exact same situations right now that think no, no type of success is possible, much less making $60,000 in a month. Right, John, people who come from your neighborhood, 
right? They don't, they don't come on. We, we you understand? Yeah. They they're not sitting around thinking about making a forty piece. Not not this right? way. But even but 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 to be clear, to be clear, because I know firsthand, not personally, <laughs> all right, not personally, just family, just family. All right, just to be really clear. All right, I don't know who's watching, but you know how hard it is to make forty racks in the street. Yeah, you got to be hella disciplined. You yeah. can't be on no corner. Nah, nah. You nah. understand? <laughs> I'm just being really real right now. Nah, you gotta be, you gotta be, you gotta be up, you gotta be up a little bit. You gotta be making some major moves, man. It ain't, it ain't. And it ain't too many of them. In the weekend. Too, yeah, listen, it ain't too many of them. Nah. And whoever, and whoever they are, it's gonna be short lived. Right. True indeed. True indeed. It's be short lived. I've been outside doing this self employed 13 years. Yeah. 13 years. How many know you, how many cash you know getting this type of money 13 years in the game? Right. Nah. I don't got no education. Failed out of college, they kicked me out, man. They came to my dorm and they said, "Bro, you got to go." Right, like you know, what I'm saying, like you don't want your welcome, my G. Like it's time to get up out of the building. Yeah, I, I, I kind of got caught. I got caught up when Habit was talking because it just reminded me of my story so much, man. I'm like, I'm delivering pieces, man. Like in 14, 15 years, you know what I'm saying? Coming from like the same, almost the same story, man. I think the last grade I passed was like eighth, ninth, or something like that. GED, you know what I mean? And just really. Like I said, I don't have nothing else but wholesaling, man. This, this, if this shit don't work, then hey, hey it's like, it's back. like back on the wall, back you on know? the wall. Yeah, so it's like I ain't going back to that shit. You know what I mean? And that's and that's just the mentality, man. And it's like hearing that, but like people, it, 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 see, I didn't, and, and I'm gonna be honest, man. It's still like parts of the story I don't really tell too much, man. But I know that it's somebody that need to hear it because. From the first interview we did, like people were like, Yeah, John, I saw your interview with man, I did this. It hit me right here. I'm like, fuck. I ain't even gonna lie, man. I shed a tear, like, you know what I'm saying? Cause I ain't think, you know, I ain't even thinking it was it was that important, man. It's just little ass me sitting out here struggling, trying to figure it out. But I ain't even think that it was that it was, you know, resonating with people like that. So to hear that just hearing the story changed somebody's life and they went and did it too. It's like, oh shit, like this the move. Right. You know. And I'm, and I'm still getting to that part, man, where I can, you know, open up all the way about it, man. Like I say, we got we got the 10-year window or something like that. <laughs> you know what I'm but, Yo, we might both got that one, though. But no, nah, I mean, and, 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 but that's what I'm saying, right? It's like, I feel it. I feel it. I did not want to get on camera. I did not want to shoot videos and talk about this and talk about that. But I, but I realized, man, I'm on assignment, man. Somebody got to hear that. And so anybody seeing this, especially if you one of my students or ever been a student, if you're not hitting my line or just somewhere, somewhere sharing, even if it ain't through me, if it's at your church, if it's at a community center, if it's at a local school, if we want to really start making some change, how we really be out here talking and making posts and sharing memes and this, that, and the third, get in the fucking street, get active. Get out here, get active. Get down here with the people and get active. Talk about what you're going through. Talk about what you've been through. And share, man, because all of us can learn in some way. I learned from Thabit sending me that text. I'm like, whoa, let me not get too. It's been a good couple of years. Let me not. Let me look back at my own shit. Make sure I'm tight. So, look, I, I appreciate y'all. Jumping up here, man, with me tonight. This might be the longest live I've done on YouTube, man. Just rocking with y'all tonight. I might be, I don't know, man. I might I me. Mean, I might be back in the zone. All right. I might be back in the zone. All right. Ready to do some more content for the people online, man. All right. Might be ready to do it again. I'm gonna let y'all jump in real quick before we get up out of here. Anything y'all want to say in closing, man? Go ahead, John. Where can people find you? We, I know you're the bully, but where, where can people find you? Where can they tap in with you? Uh, and any parting words you got as well, man? Um, You catch me on Instagram, John W. Bandit, sign bully. 
I got kicked off Facebook for some reason. They, I don't know what happened, man. They said I was nude or something. I don't know. I, I don't remember doing it. I don't think it was yeah. me. It wasn't me. But uh, but uh, but yeah, I'm on I'm on Instagram, John W. Bandit Sign Bully Man. If you in the U, nine times out of ten, you got my number. If you don't, just message me. Shoot you the number, man. Hit my line. You know what I mean. Um, but yeah, man, it's the only the only person out here that 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 is is really believing that that you can't do this thing is you, man. So you just got to get mm. out your own, get out your own way, and just say and that again, it. please, bro. Please say that again. Yeah, yeah the, only, the the main person believing you can't do it out here is you. So get out your own way. Figure out, you know, especially if you're around this group, man. Figure figure out the first step, the next step, and take them, man. Put one foot in front of the other, start walking. Um, and no, that's no. And that's pretty much it, man. It's this game like riding a bike. It's it's not you're not gonna read books, you're not gonna get a course on it and know what to do. You're not, you're not gonna do none of that shit. You gotta get out here and get on the bike, start pedaling, fall, bust your ass a couple times, get back on there, brush yourself off, and keep riding, man. Next thing you know, you popping willies and all that type of stuff. Go crazy. You know, Going yeah, yeah. And, and you know, like, like none of these guys, we, Chris dropped on the college being dabbing, man. We're not like super educated cats or nothing, nothing like that. You know what I mean? We ain't we ain't, we ain't intelligent brothers, you know, don't get Back. it twisted. Back. But, but we ain't got we ain't got I ain't got look, John. You don't see no one in them little, you know, them you go to people's houses and they office, man. They got them damn plaques on the wall with their degrees. Shout yeah. out to all of y'all. Shout out to all of y'all. Yeah. All right. yeah, yeah. All of y'all. We just don't got that. We just don't right. got that. Right. Yeah, but yeah, man, you know, get out your own way, man, and, and, and crawl, crawl before you walk. But she walk, run, get out here and run it, run it, man. You know, just take the steps, take the first step. No doubt, no doubt. Appreciate you, man. Much love, Thabit, man. What about you, my brother? Yeah, you, you can find me at Thabit Speaks. Um, hit me up, DM, DM me if you got any questions, anything like that. I'm trying to work through something. Um, but the biggest thing, man, is you know get a community, get out of your own way. Like John said, get a community, um, you know, get some coaching, get in somebody's back pocket that's doing the business. Um, and it's, it's never too late, right? You don't have to think that because you're a certain age, because you don't have a certain background, um, or even if you've got in it before and you've, you've encountered some struggles and had to fall back. Once again, never think that it's too late because uh, there's always an opportunity if you just plug in and if you just take action. Right. So just get in the game. I love it, man. Just get in the game, man. Y'all, it's been dope, man. I, I really enjoyed y'all's time. I appreciate y'all, man. Shout out to your families for giving, you know, y'all availability for some time tonight. Shout out to my students that let us delay, you know, our weekly coaching call. We usually do on Mondays at 6 p.m. You know, we'll do that tomorrow. So if you're in the U family, I will see you tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Eastern. All right. If you're interested in being in the U, all right, look in the link on the uh, description of this video. If you got questions, if you're going through something, if you want, hey, I don't know if charge up really for me or this, that, and the third, hit up John or Thabit, all right? Hit up John or Thabit. They can talk to you about it. They can tell you about their experience. I don't want you to think it's coming from me and bias or anything like that. So reach out to them. But I appreciate everybody who took the time to tune in tonight, to kick it with us tonight, spend some time. Get some information we've been on here two and a half hours so everybody who stuck through this with us the whole time man much love uh appreciate y'all sincerely if you're one of my students or a former student and you have a story to tell i saw somebody in the comments a fellow chris there's a lot of us out here all right a fellow chris all right who said uh, let me see what he said let me see if i can find it shout out to chris all right uh he said i would love to but you know i don't have a story to tell i want to be clear right like your, your, your story doesn't mean having to have closed the deal. All right. That's that's not is. Yeah. But the reality of it is, is think about how many people stop before they ever get that first deal. How many other people in that exact same spot, just like I was, it took me two years to do my first deal. That, but you were looking into wholesaling for a long time. John, you were working on wholesaling for such a long time. Imagine that. Imagine how many people I could have encouraged in the middle of that two years where I didn't get nothing done, but I was still pressing, though. You know what I mean? People that was they started that race at the same time as me in that two-year gap, and they, they ran off the track, man. They gave up. They gave up because they thought nobody else was fishing with them. They thought nobody else was running with them. 
So we all got a story, man. We all got something we can share. You know, if you're if you're one rung up on the ladder, that means there's other people there with you and other people there below you that you can service, that you can help, and you can inspire and motivate. And that's the responsibility on all of us at the end of the day, man. That's how we progress. That's how we get better. That's how we that's how we close a lot of these gaps statistically. Right? This is generational wealth. This is generational knowledge. This is generational impact. And we got to start fully standing in that and accepting that this is how we change the, the dynamic of what things look like around us. All right. So everybody be blessed, man. Much love to every single person that tapped in with us tonight. I don't know when I'm doing another one of these soon. Let's just say maybe next week, perhaps. All right. But I will be back out here, man, doing content on YouTube. Tap in with me at the Chris Jefferson on IG. Much love, everybody, man. Peace.